Fuck YouTube. Hey guys. Fuck YouTube. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Thursday's episode is foreboden. That's that's the long and short of it. Yeah, okay. Um, YouTube does not care if we took the piss out of that so-called documentary. YouTube, as in the Google, the Alphabet subsidiary. Um, they do not care that we took the piss out of that so-called documentary. They do not care if we were debunking it. They do not care if we were absolutely eviscerating it. YouTube considers any airing of that material to be against their community guidelines in any context. And any airing of it is uh, automatic account strike. So fuck YouTube. I'm going to... Um, <clears throat> Um, I, I'm going to basically record a, just a quick clip of me basically saying, fuck YouTube. Like, I'm just gonna be like, hi guys, my name's Kai. Like normally there would be a segment here where we watched a documentary, uh, is a so-called documentary, a conspiracy theory video. And we took the piss out of it for 45 minutes to an hour. Um, but YouTube has deemed it inappropriate to even do that. So... I can only assume YouTube sides with the conspiracy theory video because uh, we were taking the absolute piss out of that video. And so if it's against their community guidelines, the only conclusion I can come to is that YouTube in fact supports this video. So feel free to go look up this video. Its title is X, Y, and Z. And know that Alphabet Corporation and YouTube inherently and implicitly, uh, implicitly and explicitly support this content of this documentary because any critique of this documentary is also getting censored. Hi, you know, and yeah, that's, that's, I'm just going to plug that into where that was and re upload the clip, a uh, re up, a uh, re upload the episode. Fuck them. Hey, so we watched, okay. So some, some dummy came through and was like, you need to watch this right in this video. It's banned from the internet. You can't find it anywhere. Literally at the first site I went looking, right? It was literally at the first fucking place I looked. I'm like, yeah, definitely banned from the internet. It's some conspiracy theory movie. Um, some deep state fucking Q shit, right? And nonsense. And I watched like a portion of it, right? We have, I don't fucking know, 65, 75 people in here. We were, we were watching it and we were just taping, taking the absolute piss out of this fucking, this video, right? Like just fucking, this is a, this is a fucking joke, right? This is a fucking joke. And, um, so I upload the archive to YouTube, uh, as I always do. And a few days later, I get a strike on the account. They're like, you've had a community strike. Um, and you know, this is your first one, so it's a warning, but if you get another one, you will be banned from uploading for a week and there will be further ramifications. I'm like, what, what the fuck is it about? It's, um, spreading election misinformation. So I appeal it. I appealed the fucking strike. I'm like, dude. This is, this is a political critique. This is, we took the piss out of this video, right? Like, what does this say that, uh, what does this say that we cannot have a conversation about the misinformation? We cannot even discuss the misinformation. So how are we supposed to prevent the spread of this, this, this misinformation? If we're not even allowed to talk about the misinformation. Appeal denied. We've carefully reviewed your appeal and the content um, and blah, blah, blah. It's I posted it to the Discord. We've reviewed your content carefully and have confirmed that it violates our misinformation policy. We know this is probably disappointing news, but it's our job to make sure that YouTube is a safe place for all. How this affects your uh, channel. We won't be putting your content back up on YouTube. If you appeal, uh, if your appeal was for a warning, you will not be given another warning in the future. If your appeal was for a strike, the strike will remain on your channel. Oh, I guarantee they didn't look at it, Cupcake. 
I guarantee to you they didn't look at it. We, anytime somebody, oh, we reviewed your content carefully. Fuck you. Nobody looked at shit. You just auto-denied it. Right? Like, yeah. Fuck them. So, yeah, I'm just going to insert, I'm going to record a clip of me just talk, taking a piss out of YouTube and telling people exactly what the fucking documentary is. And a documentary. It's a fucking Q deep state fucking conspiracy video bullshit, right? Right? And the only, the only fucking conclusion I can come to, right? Since YouTube, since we were taking the piss out of that video, we were dissecting it and fucking mocking it and saying how absolutely batshit insane it was. The only logical conclusion then is, is that YouTube supports the content of that video because it's misinformation, right? Like the, my content is being labeled as misinformation, not the, not the Q deep state video. So I can only conclude that Alphabet Corporation and by extension, uh, uh, YouTube and the Alphabet Corporation by extension support the content of that Q Deep State video. And I'm just going to record that and fucking tell people where to find the video and fucking put that in instead. And I'm going to upload that. Yeah, Ross, fuck them. Um, oh, PDX Bellasaurus, thank you for the sub. Thank you for the resub. Um, Ross, it's not difficult to find. Let's just put it that way. It was literally the first place I fucking looked. The first place I fucking looked. I did not have to, I did not have to look, look very hard to find it. Um... And since, I mean, fuck them, like, it's, okay, so I'm going to separate out the name because, um, who knows what their fucking algorithm will pull when we, when we, when I upload this clip, right? Um, two words. Okay, one word, but two words. It's a compound word. When you stand out into the, uh, stand out in the sun, you cast a shadow. And when you walk through an opening in a fence, you pass through the gate. Put it together. That's what it's called. Not difficult to find. It's literally in the first place you'll go looking. Um, so, yeah. That's, that's the only conclusion I can come to. Is that since we were making fun of it. Exactly, Cave Sun Fence. Yes, a hundred percent. That's 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 definitely what it was. What it was. Um, yeah, it, it, it was like holy shit. It is Marcus. It's a very. It's an old video game, and it's a good video game. Um, but it's also some fucking documentary. And by the way, the chick who made it, um, is a Twitch streamer. Uh, fucking like. Oh, I'm sorry. No, one of the, the primary sources in the video is a Twitch streamer. Like, we looked at her channel. It's a fucking grifter on Twitch, even. Yeah, that person. Fucking whatever. Tori says. Says. Tori, Tor says. Tori says. Tori says. Tori says. Whatever the fucking her name is. That person. It's even a Twitch streamer. You can go just watch this crazy bitch. But hey, it's banned from the internet because that's why we watched it. So this fucking crazy fucker comes through and starts talking about like we were talking about some Q shit because um, uh, the, one of the doofy 8chan admin motherfuckers that's attached to the whole fucking into the storm Q bullshit, right? He, he's running for like first district Arizona congressional seat or some shit like that, like the Maricopa County Phoenix Tempe seat. And he uploaded a video, so we started um, we we started talking, taking a piss out of him, right? And we we were talking about him for a while, and we were, we watched his announcement video. Um, it was rough. It was rough. The dude needs a coach. He needs like an or oration coach. Um, but either way, we started we started talking about Q, and somebody was in the chat, and he's like, "You need to watch this 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 
documentary. It, you don't know what you're talking about, and Q's real and this sort of thing. And we're, he's like, this has been banned from the internet. I'm like, it'll be the first place I go look. Watch. I pulled it up. Literally the first place I went looking. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's definitely banned from the internet, bro. Woo, that was difficult to find. That took me all of less than 30 seconds. It took me a minute 30 in total to find it and download it in its entirety. It's an hour and a half documentary. I'm like, yeah. Woof. Banned from the internet, huh? So we watched it. We watched a piece of it. Um, we watched a segment of it, and it was, dude, it was, dude, it was 98% stock footage. Like, I'm not kidding you. It was like fucking motionarray.com, basically, just in, in like video form. 30 seconds. So even, even easier than weed in a legal say, oh, by miles, right? Like get weed. I got to fucking like, you know, go through a checkout process on their website, right? It's going to take me at least a couple of minutes to buy some weed here in this state, right? Took me less time, less time. Um, Banned, bro. Yeah, totally banned. Um, so, well, getting weed doesn't necessarily involve putting pants on in this state. We get deliveries. You can get it delivered here. Um, so, yeah. So we watched this fucking, this, this thing, right? And it's absolute garbage. It's fucking garbage. Like I said, it's 98% motion array stock footage. Like, I'm not kidding you. It's fucking brutal. And, um, so like, yeah, nonsense was on the air with me and we were just, we were having a fucking laugh. We were just having a laugh, taking a piss out of this fucking thing. And sure enough, sure enough. Yeah. Banned by YouTube. Fucking strike on the account. It's like, yeah, you know what? Go fuck yourselves. So yeah, that's why we started the, the show with fuck YouTube. Uh, because in a world where uh, one side is saying uh, trans people shouldn't exist and it's okay for blacks to be disproportionately uh, sum summarily executed by police and have a racist policing system and judicial process and have a uh, un completely unbalanced system. And the other side is saying, hey, why don't we do some universal health care and not do the racist policing system? And then somebody sits in the middle and goes, hey, guys, 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 can we compromise? Yeah, that's, that's not centrism. That's, that's just, that's fucking douchebaggery. This is MLK letter from a Birmingham jail shit, right? Like my, my qualms aren't with the clan members. My problems are increasingly becoming with the white moderates who allow this to happen. That's why. That's why they're aggr uh, aggressive and hateful towards centrists. It's because in a world where there's actual fucking oppre oh, uh, oppressors and people who want to do harm, and one side is saying, hey, can we get that to knock that fuck off, that shit off? And then somebody sits in the middle and goes, hey, guys, both sides are equal. We need to find middle ground. You're a conspirator. You're with them. Let's work together. Let's find common ground. What common ground do I have with somebody in Texas who wants to completely abolish a woman's right to bodily autonomy? Where's the common ground? Go fuck yourself. Bodily autonomy is just innate. Yeah. Fuck it. Glazy, you can't speak on this because you're not a centrist, right? What are you talking about, Glazy? Ratchet what? Yeah, who? Exactly. <laughs> Just a little bit of racism? Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's not what a centrist does. No, that's that's what a centrist does in the U.S. system. Show me a centrist. Show me a centrist. Give me give me your example. Give me your example. Where, where's your centrist? And show me how they, they, they appease this. Uh, show me how they don't appease the status quo. Because the status quo is fucked. <clears throat> Canada. How is Canada centrist? We've got Canadians in here right now. Right? Canada has factions as well. Canada cannot be characterized as centrist.
since uh, since I cock blocked Marcus's uh, MLK quote. Sorry, Marcus. Yeah, and and a black attorney at that. Like I totally cock blocked your MLK quote. Have some Dante. The hottest places in hell are reserved for those in times of moral crisis. Preserve their neutrality. What's too far? We want to work on social issues without going too far. Like, this is, you're fucking, this is doofy as shit, man. You want to come on the air and talk about it? This is fucking, I, I, look, it's a slow day. We don't have many people in here. You want to do this? I'm okay. We'll, we'll fucking have this conversation. Yeah, right? Oh, old slick Willie. <laughs> you say one thing, at least his administration fixed the fucking um, budget deficit, didn't they? Did a whole lot of other harm, though. <laughs> Literally, we have a three-way battle of conservacucks, libtards, and and deep in the in, uh, in the coach because they can't change a thing. My mother tongue is not English, so you're not from Canada, then, are you? To be fair, letter from Birmingham Jail is largely some lost arcane shit. I mean, in leftist circles, it isn't, Marcus, but. <sighs> so, you know. Yeah, Caboose, I'll, I'll, I'll count it. Oh, you're Quebecois? We have native French speakers here as well. We can totally get you a translator if necessary. And I grew up 20 minutes from the border of Quebec. And by the way, Quebec doesn't consider itself a part of Canada anyway. You know it and I know it. See? We've got plenty of people who can translate for you. Pod being sent you a missing you message there. I didn't get one. They don't they don't miss me, nonsense. They don't miss me. It's too much of a rabble rouser. Contacted their tech support way too many times. <sighs> To quote my very lib ex, you can't expect all that you want to happen overnight. It's always two steps forward, one step back. Preach. And you need to accept that progress only happens gradually. I, I need to talk to the, fr the German contingent in community because apparently there's supposedly a German uh, uh, turn of phrase that basically translates out to true love can only be found between men. I want to verify whether this is a, this is a phrase for them. Um... Yeah, I came across that uh, yesterday. I was like, oh, I need to check with fucking the Germans on this one, whether that's a thing, because <laughs> that's fucking amazing. Uh, well, I never thought I'd say that, but are the Germans wrong? Marcus. Um, I said Quebecois on, uh, on my stream 40 times last night. <laughs> uh, it's a fun word. It's a fun word. Admittedly so. It's a very fun word. Um, <clears throat> straight guys are incredibly homoromantic. Um, yeah, they are. They are. I wish the word for human was Quebecois. Uh, it's, dude, it's a fun word. It's a good word. It's got it, that, it starts with that hard K, right? Uh, but, wa, K, you know, Quebecois, Quebecois, right? Like, it's got a good mouthfeel to it. As far as an, uh, from an or orator's point of view, Quebecois is a great word. Um, but yeah, that's that's fucking hilarious. 
<clears throat> yes. Yeah, there's French under the English name in Canadian products because, well, they've, you know. Yeah, and of course, we're used to Spanish because, well, I mean, where Caboose and I live, it used to be Mexico. <laughs> The border just moved. That's all. This is fucking ain't shit about shit. La <laughs> Vejas, right? Mexico, California. These these are these are not English words, right? Yeah, the imaginary line shifted a few miles. Uh, Karina, it was, it was, it's, it's a different kind of fun. Like it's, it's a different kind of experience. It's very, um, almost medical Karina. It's very, very, yeah, it's, it's an interesting experience. It's, it's, it's like, oh, you know what it's like? Sorry. I'm talking over and around and above you guys because Karina and I have a DM session going. Um, Karina, it's like, um, it's, it's like a, a, a visit with your trainer, right? It's like going to the gym more than it is like sexy time. Because it's work. It's fucking work. Eventually it becomes sexy time. But the fact of the matter is, is it's work. Um, it, it's very much about muscle control and re relaxation and, you know, the sort of stretching and stuff like that, right? Yeah. It's like going to the gym almost. So you're just sort of having a conversation with your trainer at that point. It's a very, it's a very interesting experience. Um, Plus, we're generally pretty friendly to Mexican immigrants, so we let, see lots of Mexicans. Um, we uh, we don't we actually have primarily Asian immigrants in Las Vegas. Um, I was curious about how fun it could have been for you. Yeah, Chris, it's 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 a different kind of fun. It's a different kind of fun. Um, most most people only ever hi welcome to DJ and story to, uh, story time with Kai. Um, most people, Chris, only ever experience like one sort of sexual avenue, one sort of like sexualized activity. Um, it's, it's, you know, there's, there's a plethora, there's an array, there's a variety of experiences that are potentially on the table. You need only select them. Um, uh, where, I wonder where they'll get your, their aluminum, probably from the U S or South America. We could set up a trade route. Let's see. Let's go to the Canadian Encyclopedia, which, by the way, is a thing. Um, yeah, we could fill you out. No problem. We get a chunk from you, but we could fill out that we could fill that gap pretty quickly. And it's decreasing. Um, Mexico is increasing at a rate that you can't even keep up with. Legitimately. Um, you're decreasing. Uh, the imports, um, no, it's not the cheapest in North America. It, uh, Me uh, Mexico is the cheapest in North America. And we're increasing our import importation rates from Mexico and decreasing our rates from Canada. Funny. Uh, let's see. Let's check and let's check in on the Aluminum Association of Canada just to double check. <clears throat> Looks like a 
holy shit, y'all are fucking pwned by Rio Tinto as well. Man, Australia and Canada are Rio Tinto's bitch, aren't they? Holy shit, man. Rio Tinto is fucking impressive as far as a company goes. They're, they're evil as fuck. But man, are they a thing. Where are they? London. Figures. They have head, head, primary head, global headquarters is in London, but they have an Australian out branch, uh, branch as well. Y'all are still London's bitch. That's funny. <laughs> yep, Mexico increased their aluminum imports into the U.S. by 21.5% in the last two years. They're quickly going to become our uh, our primary supplier, like, within the next few years. Um, f largest deficit creator? Canada. Yeah. You guys are on the out. You guys are on the way out, and Mexico's on the way in. Fast forward 10 years, you'll be way down the list for us. Way down the list. You'll probably be under Thailand in the next few years. We get it from all over the globe, by the way. Our global supply chains are actually staggeringly impressive. Um, neoliberal hypercapitalism is a thing, man. Uh, Canada, China, Mexico, the UAE, Germany, India, Russia, Bahrain, Thailand, Argentina, South Africa, South Korea, Italy, Saudi Arabia, Colombia. Everybody supplies us with aluminum. Right, and Mexico's increasing at the highest rate. And Canada's actually decreasing. So, yeah. Sorry. Like, there's there's not a country that we can't cut out as as within from our supply chain. It'll cause us a few hiccups along the way, but trust me. You think our fucking economists and our bullshit fucking think tanks aren't sitting on that all the time. What happens if we got to cut Canada out? What happens if we got to cut England out? What happens if we got to cut China out? What happens if we got to cut... Please. Uh, the, DOD, the DOD has a fucking plan to invade every country on, the, on Earth. Contingency plans are made. I hate this system. I hate this fucking... The way this shit operates. But do not think for a second that there ain't a motherfucker whose entire paycheck is designing plans to work around contingencies like this. Right? Like, don't fool yourself. So how can it... <clears throat> we'll just retool the, the grid. It's no big deal. We're already se energy self-sufficient with their natural gas production in the U.S., like most of that is just treaty trade partner stuff. It's to keep you locked into a financial agreement so our countries stay intertwined. <laughs> yeah, they've as of 2019, they've basically uh double they've Jesus Christ, quadrupled down on natural gas usage in the state of uh, New York. Um, and they're, uh, they're the uh, highest producer of hydro, their own hydroelectric power of any state east of the Rocky Mountains. Lar third largest producer of hydroelectric power in our nation. They also have utility scale net generation from nuclear power plants. Yeah, and, and fucking Ross even knows the term. They're called golden handcuffs. Like, Ross actually knows the fucking colloquialism for this. They're called golden handcuffs. We're not reliant on you. You're reliant on us. Don't you understand? You need our money. Your, like, entire towns dry up if we shift power, uh, power consumption uh, sources. Like, literally, your factory just goes poof. 
because your primary purchaser shifted. That's it. Like 15,000 people out of a job overnight. Entire towns dry up instantly. School systems collapse. Keystone, yeah, Keystone wasn't about U.S. jobs. It was always about Canadian jobs. That can't possibly be the case. What? The Rust Belt? What's that? Do you know how much more it will cost to, for logistics to ship aluminum to Europe? To create your primary consumer in Europe rather than on the same continent than you? It'll double or triple the cost. Like, what, what, what kind of weird nationalist shit are you on? Right? Like, fuck the U.S. Fuck Canada. Fuck this system. Fuck neoliberal politics. Fuck capitalism. But homie, you're fucking drinking the fucking Flavor-Aid Kool-Aid, if you don't know that reference. You're fucking drinking the Kool-Aid, bruh. You're way too invested in this shit. If you don't think the fucking U.S. can't cut a fucking supply line out like that, you're out of your goddamn gourd. Right? Like, man. Get real, homie. I had a God, I had a Quebec, uh, Quebecois friend several years ago that acted a lot like this guy. I'm getting flashbacks. No, dude, they're all fucking weird as shit, man. I like them, but they're weird, man. Oh, and apparently BC produces a bunch of fucking aluminum too. Or we just get it from Australia. <clears throat> Australia produces fucking more uh, aluminum than you guys by miles. Literally, we have like all other options. China, Australia, Brazil, India, Russia, Jamaica. Jamaica produces more uh, more aluminum than you. Saudi Arabia, the U.S. By the way, we produce more aluminum than you. Just FYI. Just, just you know, something you should know. Um, the blockade of the southern states in the Civil War is literally why Egyptian cotton is so famous. This is not hard. No, we can run a supply line like that. The U.S. is really good at that. They're really good at it. We have supply lines over the globe. Um, let me still, let, let me look up the the Perovskite. Um, who's producing it? Um, calcium titanium oxide. Hey, Kez. Kez's people. So, calcium titanate. Uh, um, how was your stream? We're dealing with, like, some Quebecois wannabe nationalist dude who's fucking standing can Canada hard right now. It's weird. Um, how'd you guys do? All right, calcium titanate market. <laughs> China and the U.S. <clears throat> China and the U.S. are the major producers right now. 
Um, dude, I'm not a nationalist. I love Canada. Who wants to break it to him? <laughs> hey, Squiddy. Oh, he's in yours earlier, too? I mean... Hey, Ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did the same thing here. Um, and then got butthurt when I smacked him down with the fact that centrists are basically guilty of, of um, allowing the evil to happen. I did the MLK um, letter from a Birmingham jail quote, and Marcus hit him with some Dante. And basically we explained to him that the reason the fucking leftists are so hard on centrists is because that you've got one group on one side saying like, hey, let's do some genocide and racist shit and make people suffer. And you got another side going, hey, let's not do that. And you got some douchebag in the middle going, hey, guys, let's find some common ground and let's you, let's hash this stuff out. I'm sure we can find a middle place. Fuck you. Right. Like, hey, let's find some common ground with the Nazis. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Good job. <clears throat> yep, justified. Yeah, Ray. Exactly. Like that's that's this that's the problem with centrists is like you know in times of crisis, right? Maintaining your neutrality. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. I can show you literal history where the centrists in Britain tried to placate and work with the Nazis. I can show you actual fucking historical documents, meetings, and attempted treaty signings or actual treaty signings with the fucking moderate centrists in fucking Britain placating and working with Nazis. Yes, fucking Chamberlain. Homie, your descriptive definition of centrist don't fly in, in a prescriptivist political science space like this. Gee, it's almost as if centrism is the logical fallacy of false equivalency. Oh, squid. No, we were fucking... I wouldn't even consider it centrist. The U.S. was just doing what the U.S. does, right? We were profiting from the Nazis over on the business side, see IBM and fucking oil, uh, standard oil and shit like that, right? Um, and then when our when we finally got drug into the war and our interests were, uh, were threatened, then we're like, fine, we'll do something about it. Mm-hmm. If the, if the Nazis had not fucked with us and just left us the fuck alone, right? Like if, if they had, if we had just been able to ship and not get involved in that, if they had stayed to their own turf, there is a high probability the U S would have just been like, nah, I'm good. Y'all have fun with that. This throne. I have to find that quote. Um, <clears throat> oh, squid. I mean, we. Yeah, we, we, it wasn't. We were hoping they'd take care of each other. Right. That's that's we were helping that we were hoping they would cancel each other out, basically. Like, that was the long-term hope, and you know it, like, right? Um, Hey, 
Hey, public. Oh, public. We were, we were, we were profiting from it. Like I said, if, if the cost didn't outweigh the benefits, we would have stayed the fuck out. Right? We were already, I already said, like IBM, Standard Oil, fucking Union Banking, you name it. We were profiting from it. Right? As long as they stayed the fuck out of our way, whatever. Y'all have fun with that. But, you know, they started sinking our ships and shit and started costing us things and we got drug into and there seemed like they were power imbalance started happening and a few other factors started to kick off and we're like, fine, fine, right? <laughs> Fucking Japan had to go fuck up, you know, fuck it up for us, right? We were, we were, we we're profiting greatly from it. Yeah, we would have sold them whatever they fucking needed. Right? Like, we didn't use shit. But, you know, had to go fuck up the business side of it. So, yeah, we got involved. But, yeah, there's there was a number of factors there that would have kept us out if they didn't go and fuck it up. <laughs> and, I mean, we've shown the video of fucking Madison Square Garden with, like, 25,000 fucking Nazis. And you could extend that public to power is all that matters. And you can exempt capitalism entirely. Money is all that matters in capitalism because money is the representation of power in capitalism. But at the end of the day, all that matters is power. So under like in a monarchical system or a feudalist system or whatever, right? Power, consolidation of power is what matters. In capitalism, it's represented by money. We've never not been an oligarchy. That's, there's rare exceptions like Cospia, but the fact of the matter is, is that all of human history is like all governance is oligarchical. I don't care if you show me the Roman Senate, the British Parliament, a constitutional monarchy, you show me the fucking government and I'll show you the CCP, the USSR, I'll show you the rich and powerful manipulating the system from behind the scenes or blatantly in the front. I'll show you an oligarchy. It's always been an oligarchy. Whole way down. Ray, I think those are moot points. I think the I think the difference between what would probably be described as neo capitalism and classic capitalism are moot points. I think that at the end of the day, what you require is a state to maintain the status quo, to uh, uh, to maintain the balance of power. You have to have the armies, the police, to back up the banking system, to back up the economic system, because you have to maintain that by force. There has to be a state to do that. So you have to have a monopolization of force. I think the, the characteristics and aesthetics that matter at the end of the day, there really aren't any differences between neo and classical ca capitalism. I think there's some, some very key differences. And if you want to do like a Smithian analysis, what you would end up with is that the rentier class is a complete parasite on society, and even the father of capitalism, Adam Smith, would say so. Like, he explicitly said so. The rentier class should be abolished, right? There should be no landlords. There should be no intellectual property. There should be none of that bullshit, right? The father of capitalism was against that stuff. So that would reshape and, re, like, resurface capitalism as a whole, right? But... The aesthetics, the, the underlying foundation would still be there. The privatization of the commons would still be there. The privatization of what we, we recognize as like the common goods, land, water, air, trees, these sorts of things would still be permissible under that classical system. Therefore, you still have an unjust hierarchy. You still have wage slavery. You still have, you know, these sorts of things, right? Do I think it's a moot discussion at the end of the day? But there's a there's discussion that can be had that's definitely an interesting thought experiment. What if Disney couldn't control their IP, right? What if landlords weren't allowed to rent land or rent housing and land, right? Like these are these are some interesting conversations to have. But in the end of the day, you're still gonna have the wage labor, you're still gonna have the privatization of the commons. 
um, you're still going to have the privatization of the means of production. So, you know, there's my answer, Ray. Uh, it, it, Ray, I, I didn't assume you were. I didn't assume you were. It just, I'm just going to answer you in full. Um, I, you know, the jaw is still wonky and I want to su be able to suck dick because so uh, the fucking TMJ is fucking that up for me. Um, but, um, spent, spent last night in a sling with, um, <clears throat> so, you know, it was a good night. And I, I told the story as, as least explicitly as I could, uh, for D gen story time, uh, with Kai, uh, it's be quickly becoming a regular thing on the channel. Um, beyond that, the neuropathy is kind of pretty bad today. Um, but we, I probably have a session of, uh, seven days, uh, seven days to die later tonight. Sweet cat Karina. If you want to get in on it, you're on that server too. Um, so yeah, we're going to, we're going to do horde night. It does Ross. It does. Oh, I mean, it is what it is. Cause, um, can't spend all day in the bath. This motherfucker still going? Uh, yeah, it's a zombie crafting survival game, which is different for me because I absolutely fucking hate crafting survival games. I despise them. Um, Karina, uh, yeah, the other night, uh, Monday, I, I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna have to check with Swede. Well, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is Swede wanted to get in on it, but the server is running constantly. You have D&D &D until 10. All right, I'll, I'll notate that and... We'll take that into account. Um, oof, Jesus, Kez. Yeah, um, yeah, I absolutely despise crafting survival games. And Swede wanted to get a game going. Um, <laughs> justified. Um, Swede wanted to get a game going. And I brought it up on stream. He said, you think you can get some people in on it? I was like, yeah, I'll try and drum up some people. And I told Swede, basically, I'm like, if you want me to play, I ain't buying it. <laughs> so he basically he was he was kind enough to kick me a license he's like you know he gifted it to me um and he got a dedicated server set up and we've got two games going we've got one on my system and we've got one on sweet server um cat and i have been the primary players on my system um karina stopped in and thankfully unlocked those gun safes uh in in my base um but yeah the the game on my system is advanced um, yeah, we, I, we, we, Kat and I both have ground out some fucking advancements in that game for sure. Um, I've been having a good time. Oh, Rev, dude, I couldn't imagine playing that seven days on fucking anything than a keyboard and mouse. Dude, you gotta have a fucking keyboard for that. Um, it's a fun game. I, I, I did not, I hate, I hate crafting survival. I hate it with a passion. I'm having fun in that game. Like, legitimately, I'm having fun. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if anybody wants to join, you're always, like, we can have eight on Swede's server. Um, on mine, we can have as many as I can fucking handle. Um, so, like, it's just a matter of balancing resources right now. Like, right now, I think we could probably support three to four maybe five players with the resource crafting that we have right now on my game we did we, but yeah like people are welcome to stop by um we've got plenty of stuff can you talk about why you hate crafting survival so much i mean yeah hang on let me let me dump us over to just chatting let me dump us over to just chatting really quickly and take us out of politics um i hate doing shit like that right i am uh uh distrun this thrawn. Um, I'm a sneaky survival assassin sniper game player, right? My games are Hitman, Sniper Elite, Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts, Dishonored, um, these sorts of things, right? These this is this is my game base. I like to um go into a fully built out world 
and pick up a fucking dagger or a sniper rifle or a silenced pistol and sneak up behind um, people and execute them, right? Or take them out from a distance. I love sniping games, right? This is this is this is my preferred play. I love stealth assassination games. It's a little bit of a power fantasy for sure. Um, and if I have to build my sniper rifle, that's just days and weeks worth of work that I don't want to have to do. Just let me open a case, pick up my sniper rifle and assassinate my target, right? Like that's the game style. That's the game loop I prefer. I've been playing these types of games for years and years and years. Um, you know, Metal Gear. I, I like stealth assassination games. Um, building my own base, building my own, having to mine the iron to build something is not, is what I see as a time sink. Um, but for some reason, something about seven days hooked me. I've seen it played before. I've seen um, playthroughs um, of by Avak and Lady Shilab, um, and like you know, so I I knew what it was going in, and I was still hesitant. This is why I, you know basically told Swede, um, oh yeah, 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 right, no, no, Hitman is my series. I am a Hitman player, right? Like I've got many hours in Hitman. Um, so like, you know, yeah, I, I knew what I was going in, but this is why I told Sweet. I was like, you know, if you want me to play like, mm. um, but it, it fucking took for whatever reason it took. I like the gameplay loop and so far so good. I don't know if I'll be one of those 6,000 hour players. I don't know. Like, I don't know how many replays I'll have in it. Um, but right now I like the progression. I like what I'm playing, uh, what I'm doing. So yeah, it's the first crafting survival game I've ever played that I liked. Um, just run. I, I don't do miniatures. So like, you know, yeah, but I get it. Uh, yeah, public, uh, when you, when you, after I do like a, um, a master level perfect run, Right, like then you need to blow off steam and you just need to be like um, full on serial killer and clean the level. Right, like it's a good, it's good pressure release. Uh, no, I have not played Ghost of Tsushima because um, that's PlayStation, right? I don't, I don't do console. I'm not a console gamer, PC master race. Um, yeah. So there you go. There's there's my X one Oh, I even look tired. Uh, <laughs> Karina apparently uh, Distron um, likes doing miniatures. Um, I had a few times where I broke the game by killing everyone. Yeah, yeah. That that some of the early editions, especially like of uh, World of Assassination, the 2016, and then Hitman two twenty Hitman three um, series. Um, like India, like the Mumbai level and the Miami levels, definitely if you did a kill everyone challenge, like it did a kill everyone run, um, the game engine could not handle it. Um, my system can, uh, new additions and my system can, but some of the older machines, some of the less specced machines definitely still struggle to deal with it. So, there you go. Oh. Um. Oh, God. Yeah, that fucking headline. Ugh. Ray is in command. Um. You can throw me biddies if you want. Um. You do. I. Nobody does the Patreon if you want. Um, if you want, I can send you like a Monero address, but at the end of the day, yeah, like I'm not doing it for those reasons. Again, no tip. Um, let's see, doing nothing. Yeah. Addresses. What are those? Uh, you know, it's cryptocurrency. I don't use it because I'm a crypto guy. I use it because other reasons. <laughs> We're not allowed to talk about that kind of stuff. TOS, after all. Um.
Oh, coffee. Um, you and chat cover the world's hot topics. Um, I think you tagged the wrong person, Disthrin. Um, I'm waiting for um, whatever is it, the fucking, the creator's one to come out of alpha beta shit. Um, you know what? Hang on. Oh, Jesus Christ. Sorry. Um, all right. Tell you what, if you want a tip, I'll set it up right now. Um, I, I will literally, if you want to use it, I will set it up right this moment. <laughs> um, I don't, don't even worry. Keep your five. Here's what I want you to do. Ray, with that $5, here's what I want you to do. If you want to tip me that $5, put that $5 somewhere and just hand it to somebody who needs it. Seriously, give it to someone who's homeless. Give it to somebody who's hungry. Tell you what, if you've got somebody in your life that you, um, that's fine. No, no, no. What I want you to do is like, if you've got somebody in your life, take somebody you love and care about out for, out for a drink, right? That's, that's, that would, that would bring me way more joy than you sending me that $5, right? Give it, give it to somebody who needs it. Get, put that $5 into like, buy, go buy a Subway sub and hand it to somebody who's hungry on the street corner. Way more, way more important than sending me that five. Yeah. I appreciate it. I do. But like at the end of the day, put it somewhere that like needs it. Okay, then I want to give 20. I mean, are you just trying to buy me off now? <laughs> like, are you just trying to get me to set up this coffee thing? <laughs> um, I think, I think, I think Ray gets a, gets a cut. Uh, let me, uh, hang on. Um, I accept, create, save it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, choose image. Uh, where's the PR next? Um, I do, uh, community. Podcast news. Other. Yeah. Uh, so aim. There, just quickly. Um, cool. Payment settings, um, connect it. Oh, no. I know I'm not looking at chat, forgive me. Log in. Next, agree and connect. Go back. Um, connected, home. All right. Um, Ray? Um, here you go.
Link in chat, Ray. And for the other person who wanted to tip or whatever, feel free. N now you're just fucking dick measuring, Beranger. Now you're just trying to dick measure. Um, get on the air. Get on the air, man. I don't mind a French accent. You seem perfectly competent with your English. Come on. Come on the air, man. You're not one of those cowardly keyboard warriors, are you? Come have the conversation. Is it recommended size is that? All right. Um, let's see. Where's my deep store projects? Image. Nope. Wrong one. Images. Protest crowd. Hey, I just got my first coffee. Oh, that comes right in. Holy shit, they transfer that immediately. Thank you, Ray. There's a fucking stream alert connected to it. Um, literally just connected it, man. Literally just connected it. Like, what do you what do you want from me? Um, oh, uh, let's see. Is that just that just stays on the screen? Ugh. I hate that. I, yeah, I hate that. Ugh. <sighs> That's not staying on the screen. That's not staying on the screen at all. Um, yeah, remove that. That's that's disgusting. Uh, that's disgusting. Um, I thank you. Um, yeah, it went it went straight in. Uh, Disthrone. Um, PayPal. But yeah, I got the alert. It it immediately transferred. Um. Giving the money to people that should have it instead of corporate America because fuck the government. Um, thank you, Ray. Now I have questions. I have questions about this. <laughs> hey, Splatty's live. I love Splatter Cat. Um, No, Ray. Actually, my question is, is do you get to see the PayPal donation? Do you see the PayPal account? 
or does coffee sit between PayPal and you? Because if that's exposing the PayPal account, I don't want it connected. Like, does it literally just direct you to a PayPal donation? Okay, so Ray, when you donate, you just see the name Kai and Proudly Radical? That's it? Okay, Estrella, cool. Thank you. All right, cool. That's 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 my question is whether it exposes the coffee name. Uh, if it exposes the PayPal. Okay. Okay, cool and thank you. That's all I was curious about. Um Auto thank you message. Uh, there. <laughs> nice dis. Exactly, Estrella. It's exactly the the, the concern. Um, yippee, Skippy! Thanks for the yiffy. Oh God, yiff, yiff in hell. Um, all right. Um, and Eric, here I'll. I'll, I'll give you the, the I'll give you that. Um, all right, so I suppose I should fucking add like a, a command for this or something, right? Um, tip, I guess. There, done. Uh, if you have questions beyond that, sorry, I'm just doing a something else right now. Um, if you have questions beyond that, though, by all means. All right, dun, dun, dun. Delete. It should be just the tip. <laughs> uh... Uh, no, Buddhist. I prefer to receive the whole fucking, uh, the whole shaft as well. You should be balls deep in there, right? I, I, I should, if, if you have pubes, I should feel those pubes. Um, tip ain't ever enough. I'm a greedy, greedy slut. Uh. And, and if you can fit the balls in too. Yeah, let's go for that too. Um, I had a dude one time, years ago, years ago, um, said to me at a party, uh, like literally looks at me at a party and goes, I want to jack off inside you. Do you understand what that entails? Right? You, you, you understand what the fuck that means? <laughs> right? I want to jack off inside you. Holy shit, man. Uh, in the cut, welcome. Thanks for the follow. Um, uh, uh, Rev, uh, as much as I love Curio, I do not follow the Lord's inch. <laughs> fucking, God doesn't get a fucking inch. Sorry. Ross, oh, oh. Um... Ray. Um, do you think you could have sexual feelings towards Stalin? I mean, I'd fuck him, but he's not my type. I, I know everybody's like, young Stalin was hot. He's not my type. I don't see it. I don't get it, but I'd fuck him. Right? Especially if I could, like, I'd do a number on his head. 
right? I'd, I'd try to fuck with his head at the same time that he was he was railing me, and I'd try and you know prevent a couple of genocides, right? I'd, I'd use my I'd use the powers of my ass for the good of mankind, right? Oh, Cricks, it never happened. It never happened. Uh, it, it never happened. Yeah, yeah, Ray, hundred percent, hundred percent. Ask your mom. <laughs> um, yeah, that 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 never that never came to fruition, Cricks. Um, <laughs> as far as MLs goes, Stalin upper tier. Would you get a fuck Khrushchev? Praxis. Um. I, I, people, like, yeah, leftists are constantly, like, banging on about how fucking, like, young Stalin was hot and shit, and I, I don't, see, like, I see it, I kind of get it, like, I, I understand where they're coming from, right? Here. Here's a colorized version of him. Here's a colorized portrait. <clears throat> Why did that not pop? Why did that not pop? Give me a sec. Okay, well, it's not Leoran board that's having the issue. Um, channel points. Yeah, let's manage them. Edit it. All right. I don't know why. I don't know why that didn't pop. Um, absurdist. I have no idea why that did not pop for you. That's weird as shit, man. Um, let me refund those points, though. Just make sure you get them back. You know what? I'm just going to give. <laughs> Reject all. Everybody, for like the last 44 channel points uh, redemptions. Um, the last 44 channel point redemptions just got rejected. So a whole bunch of you probably got some channel points back. Disseran, thank you for the oh, thank you for the follow. Um, yep, everybody. Uh, ah, thank you, Ray. the The skirt is uh, the skirt has put a lot of work in on this channel. The skirt has put a lot of work in on this channel. Saving for Tanky's co uh, coping. I wonder what it is. Oh, right. It's a song. I'll tell you that. It's a song made by a community member. Uh, Fertus. Does Fertus want on the air? I'm going to fucking do it. What's up, you French fuck? Oh, 
you seem to want some French accent going on here, so I, I, I thought. <laughs> Night, Kaz. Oh, we had some Quebecois motherfucker in here standing Canada oh, hard. Yeah, I know. And so, I know, I know. yeah, he, he was claiming that his English wasn't good enough to come on the air. And I'm like, well, we got fucking French speakers. We got a few of them. Like, we can get translators up in this bitch if you need them. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, there we go. Marcus redeemed it for you. Oh. Everybody's fucking spending their points. Uh, no, Karina. But like, we won't we won't play before ten. Don't worry about it. I'll hold this off if you want to join in. They are basically going whole hog on the points. I can't. I, I got the, the tankies coping going in my ear here, so I can't really hear you. Um. All right. Um, YouTube has just blocked one of the videos I uploaded from the other day because of the fact that we watched the reboot the Guardian Code official trailer. So they literally blocked the video. Trim the segment. I don't give a shit. Continue. Trim it. Go fuck yourself. Fucking YouTube. I swear to God. I think it was there. What, what was the uh, video about anyway? Um, dispute. Did, did, did Holy shit. Nonsense? Um, yeah, oh, uh, the, the, um, hold on, hold on. This is, this is literally a video of the Nestle CEO claiming, uh, let's see, claiming all water rights. How dare you not allow this to be viewed solely for political commentary purposes? Who claims such a thing? Um, Definition of fair use. This system is broken AF. Somebody copy a copyright claimed um fucking Somebody copyright claimed that video we watched last night of the Nestle CEO talking about how fucking water isn't a human right and it, we should be able to privatize all water on Earth. Somebody copyright claimed that video. I disputed that. And then the one from the day before is outright blocked because of the fucking who 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 does this one by the way? Whose action is this? Federator Allied Media. Well, that sounds like some bullshit if there ever was. Is a pioneer in streaming video and the leading independent producer of cartoons for television and video. Sure you are. You're a copyright claim manager. Um, yeah. Oh, fuck these people. Fuck these people, man. Um, yuck. Dispute has been submitted. You better fuck. Okay, so the copyright content 
is fucking claimed by some co a company called Agata. Agita. X. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Oh, really? Expert group on energy data and analysis. Seems legit. Or, oh no, or, or it's this Agita US digital group, which is a collective that manages rights of audiovisual producers collecting on their behalf royalties that cannot be collected individually. They're claiming, okay, so they're claiming that this video belongs to Nostro, uh, uh, Nosotros Alimentos al Mundo, which is, mm -hmm. um, let's see, do they belong to a particular. Like, I mean, it, it, it's it, fucking all it means is like, is there a, is there a Spanish group called We Feed the World? Like, cause that's what Nosotros uh, Alimentos uh, Alamundo means. It means We Feed the World. Yeah, um, that's mighty sauce. Yeah. So like the Nestle CEO, the video of the Nestle CEO claiming that they should be able to privatize all water has been claimed by an intellectual property manager out of Los Angeles on behalf of a nebulous entity called We Feed the World. I'm just saying if this isn't as sus as fuck as it comes, right? Like this is this is some Nestle conspiracy shit we just stumbled into. <laughs> yeah, it's not conspiracy if it's like no transparent. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, like, holy shit, man. Big Money says shut the fuck up. Yeah, basically. Um, like, holy fuck. You saw nothing. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, dude, we need to watch that video again. That's, okay, let's watch that video again. That's, I'm just gonna fucking keep doing this shit. Right? Like, this is, this, this is the thing now. This is the thing. We're gonna watch this fucking video on every stream now. Because fuck this guy, fuck Nestle, fuck, fuck all these assholes, right? Like, this video is crazy as shit, man. It's actually the most raw material that we have today on the world. It's about how we can provide normal water for the population or not. And there are two different views. The one view is extremely, I would say, wird von einigen von den äh, NGOs vertreten, äh, die darauf pochen, dass Wasser zu einem äh, äh, öffentlichen Recht erklärt wird. Yeah, the extreme, das heißt, the extreme position is that public is uh, that water is a public right, right? The fact that you you should be able to have access to water is an extremist position. Als Mensch sollten Sie einfach Recht haben um Wasser zu haben. Das ist die eine Extremlösung. Ja? Und äh, die andere, die sagt, Wasser ist ein Lebensmittel, so, so wie jedes andere Lebensmittel, sollte das einen Marktwert haben. Ich persönlich glaube, es ist besser, äh, man gibt einem Lebensmittel einen Wert, so dass wir alle bewusst sind, dass, dass das etwas kostet. Und dann anschließend äh, versucht, dass man mehr spezifisch für diesen Teil der Bevölkerung, der keinen Zugang zu diesem Wasser hat. Oh, no. Uh, cupcake. Cupcake. The, uh, I, I can't show you it because I'm not going to go into my panel. But you should see. Um, you should see this fucking video. This video, I have one, two, three, four, five, six claims stacked on it right the one that they came for this one on there's six other fucking claims on so don't even worry about it yeah
dass man dann dort etwas spezifischer eingreift und da gibt es ja verschiedene Möglichkeiten. Also. Fuck this guy. That's, that's all I have to say. And fuck whoever's trying to copyright claim that video. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Ninja, uh, how long are you going to be in Vegas? We'll meet up, man. We'll fucking hang out. Um, Ninja, Ninja said, I'm in Vegas right now, and I thought I knew what flow restriction is being from Cali. Las Vegas is no joke. Dude, we take our we 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 talk uh, we take our shit seriously here in Las Vegas. Like, we, dude, water is a thing here. It's a thing. Like, I I know the rest of the world's like, you know, oh fucking clean water, and you know the water wars are coming and water restrict. Dude, Vegas has been that way for twenty fucking years, easy. Probably more like thirty thirty five. We take it seriously. We haven't had um uh, the the Hoover Dam uh, Lake Mead has not been full since I think the last time it was full is in the year two thousand, right? Slowly but surely, we have a literal water line that is just decreasing. That is the primary supply of our water, and every year you can go out and see where it used to be, and it's just getting lower and lower and lower and lower and lower every year. We've been freaking out about it for a while. Yeah. Like water is a thing here. Um. Okay. So it is projected that in 2025, two thirds of water will be used as agriculture water. One fourth thereabouts as industrial water and one eighth thereabout. My, my, my I, I will admit as domestic water. So, which means that there are one, two, three, four, yeah, like agriculture consumes four times as much water as you and I uh, drinking it, bathing in it, cooking with it. So, if anything, we need our public institutions to protect us against the industry that takes that much water so that we still have something to drink at the end of the day. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's the Southern California agriculture that's dry, uh, draining us dry here. Like that's we, we, you know, yeah. Um, and you, if, if you guys were following along those series of pictures, you notice how that line is getting higher and higher and hot fucking higher, how this white ring is essentially fucking getting larger and larger. And now it's a fucking like giant hills worth. Yeah, like that's that's as the years progress. It, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And yeah, anybody in Las Vegas like already understands. Um, here here is here's our water level from 2015 to uh, 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 January to June of 2015. Right, boom. It, it's not increasing. It's just dropping and dropping and dropping. It has been dropping, like I said, since 2000, uh, the year 2000, I think, was the last time that the water level in Lake Mead was literally um, at 100% uh, capacity. It's never returned to it. Um, so, yeah, no, it's it's the Southern California agriculture that drains most of the Colorado River. It doesn't even, the Colorado River doesn't even make it to the, uh, to the ocean anymore. Oh, okay. shit. Yeah, it dries up before it dries. Yeah, I think I've heard of it. Yeah, fucking we we tap it dry before Mexico can even get it. Basically, Mexico gets a fucking trickle from what it used to be. Um, here, <clears throat> y'all want to see y'all want to see a boat dock on Lake Mead? Here, here, this is this is where one of a fair uh, like a ferry service around Lake Mead used to used to dock. That's a big ass ferry. <laughs> yeah. Like this is this this is a thing. Um let me get you the uh There's always a there's a there's there's a series of like photos that are always uh let's see like one um Yeah, here we go. 
Here's 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 the commercial boat dock. I, I'm sorry, the private boat dock. This is this is for like private uh, private people, right? This is this this is where the residents used to keep their boats. Here's another one. Used to be boats there. And let's see. Here's what that marina used to look like. Oh, it's fresh water, Karina. Wait, when was that taken? I couldn't tell you. Years ago now. The resolution yeah, but... is rough. Oh, fair enough. Have you heard of the project to wall off the, the North Sea? Yes, I have. Uh, this and... thread, I had to blow it up. That, pi that picture was 720 in resolution. I had a, f um, so yeah, it, it's dude. Yeah, I have. Um, yeah. I have heard that before. And more dogs. And please, and for twin. Um, we were we were gonna run a pipeline into northern Nevada and start stealing their water. Hmm. That was that was what we were gonna do, um. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ninja. But you know, all I'm saying is that Vegas has been hyper aware of this for a few decades. Um, being a desert city like Las Vegas is, um, we've we've always been kind of aware of the water issue, as it were. Um. Yeah. Let me kill that there. Um, this was, let's see, when was this? Okay. So this was in 2016 and it's only lower now. Right? Mm -hmm. Those are supposed to be underwater. We had to lower the intake, um, uh, the intakes for the turbines a couple years back. We actually sank them further. The the original constructors of the dam had they never thought the water level would be as low as it is, and so yeah, the intake uh, the intakes for the uh, the turbines had to be dropped even further. Yeah. You're going to be sucking mud at some point. Doesn't seem very efficient. Hey, I mean, you know, it was a giant fucking government construction project. Like, it's, you know, we lost lives on that motherfucker. <laughs> Efficiency wasn't the, the name of the game. It was grand project, right? Um. Trying to find the yellow current one. Mm. Yeah. All right. Hey, seller. Phoenix going to have a rough time soon enough. Phoenix is a rough time. Dude, Phoenix, don't go to Phoenix. Don't go to Phoenix. Just don't go to Phoenix. All right? Y'all, like, trust me. There's never a reason to go to Phoenix. <laughs> it's just, I know you're like, well, what if, no, no, 
I don't care if your fucking beloved grandmother has to have a like a, a, a flight through Phoenix and has a heart attack and gets taken over to the Phoenix Memorial Hospital and you're like, well, it might be her last breath. Don't go to Phoenix. There's no fucking reason to go to Phoenix. Just believe me. Trust me on this one. Never go to Phoenix. Let the beach croak. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> it, trust me, it's hell on earth. It's a fucking dude. It is an affront to all that should exist. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah, Disturin. Um, Caboose is still nostalgic for Phoenix. Fucking a Caboose. Um, turd. It, it's aka <sighs> preach. Um, one. It is ungodly hot. Right. It is ungodly hot. Two. They have nothing. There's nothing interesting in Phoenix. Three, the whole thing is fucking stolen Indian land anyway, right? It's all it's all indigenous land. It's all Native American land that we just fucking hijacked. That's why they're surrounded by reservations. Like three different reservations are basically all around Phoenix because you're just sitting on stolen land the whole fucking time, <laughs> right? Like that's that's the whole deal is that city is essentially a giant Native American burial ground. <laughs> um, for, it's prob <clears throat> probably why it's cursed as fuck for that's where big industry goes to exploit on a level that you can't even begin to conceive uh, and we just sort of hide it there you're like really in phoenix yeah it's where we like that's where we shuttle off like ten thousand fucking motorola workers to work in the desert heat for fucking pennies on the dollar right it's a godforsaken city in so many ways plus it's maricopa county you ever heard of sheriff joe arpaio he's not in charge anymore but where do you think that shit came from it's Maricopa County. That's Phoenix. That's home of the if they're brown, stop them and arrest them laws. Right? Like this, this is, dude, there's no reason to go to Phoenix. Don't do it. It's a shithole. Um, Aka did a summer in Phoenix. Never again. Fuck Arpaio. Yeah, fuck Arpaio. Um, I've told that story before. I've met him. I've met him once. Um, oh shit! Yeah, oh yeah, fucking. Those are the kind of. Uh, <laughs> I missed what all was said, but I heard that. I hate that guy. Yeah, I've met him. Um, there was, we were doing a, a an NRA fundraiser. Um, in one of the Laughlin, Nevada casinos. Right, Laughlin's this fucking. It's named after Don Laughlin, who founded the town. He was like, we're gonna have a fucking casino town on the border of Arizona, right? But it's in Nevada, so it's illegal. It, so it's legal there. Um, and so, yeah, there was an NRA fundraiser years and years ago when, our, when my family used to run gun ranges and, like, training center and shit like that, right? And they were doing a, um, uh, was it a silent auction um, for the NRA. And good old Sheriff Joe came up, right? And he, um, he, he donated an item for the silent auction. Oh, boy. His item was a pair of the pink boxer shorts that his chain gang slave workers are required to wear when they put them in those fucking tent cities out in the middle of the fucking Arizona desert in the dead of summer. And so it was a pair, pink pair of boxer shorts because of masculating. <laughs> Isn't it funny to make the men wear pink? Yeah. <laughs> Right. Like this is this is his mentality as a human being. So he donated a pair of pink boxer shorts and signed them. No, I don't know how much they went for, but they sold. So there you go. Yeah. So, yeah, I've met Sheriff Joe Arapaio. Um, no worries. Um, good luck, Karina. Catch you later. I'll see you after D and D. Caboose, I'll see you after D and D as well. Or, well, I'll see Karina. If if you want to stop in to to hang out with us or play Seven Days, um, Caboose, you're always welcome. I know you're waiting on your first paycheck and shit. Um, no, they weren't my undies, Zippy. They were just a pair of uh, donated pink boxer shorts that Sheriff Joe fucking brought with him. Fucking doofy motherfucker! I swear to God. I don't know how, like, I don't like to resort to the world, you know, the word evil, but how mean, mm -hmm. how cruel do you have to be to summon that kind of pettiness? Um, 
America. <laughs> Dude, we're good at it. Um, we were talking last night and Viva fucking was in chat and Viva's like, how are you a country? We were, <laughs> um, we were talking about um, patient dumping. Because it's, dude, we had to have a human rights commission on it here in this country because it's so common. Fucking if you can't pay, the hospital just basically like disconnects you from the machine. Security walks you out to the edge of the property and dumps you. That's super, rough. it's super common. Um, we had, we had, we had somebody in chat who literally squid. I don't know if Squiddy's still here. Squid had it happen to him. He fucking, he had it happen to him straight up. Yeah, he's like, yeah, patient dumping. I'm like, you know, yeah. And fucking Burgerman was here. He's he's Indian, like straight up, like subcontinent, right? He's Indian. And he's like, I don't think that's even a thing here. Like that, holy shit, man. Like, how is that a thing? I'm like, it's super common in America. I'm like, just search for it. Just type patient dumping into a search engine and watch all the US results that come up. And... Yeah, this fucking black dude was found out in front of a hospital and somebody called 911. And the the um the the hos- like EMT show up, like fire department shows up, and the hospital maintains that like, oh, he was in he was stable and uh, his Medicare wouldn't pay for any more vi- uh, any more hospital time, so he was um so he was discharged. Sepsis He's, he literally had, he had sepsis, a fever, a urinary tract infection, and a dangerously high heart rate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was super stable. Yeah. De- generally, I think of a patient as stable when they have sepsis. Oh, tracks. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was like, yeah, happen again. Like, and yeah, there were people in chat who could not fucking believe it was even a thing. I'm like, yeah, it's a thing. And fucking Viva just sit chat. He's like, how are you a country? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, man. Because we got all the bombs and bullets, basically. That's just, dude, it's duct tape, bombs, and bullets holding this shit together at this point. <laughs> yeah, he did. He still had a damn catheter in him. The dude still had tubes coming out of him. I'm not shitting you. They didn't, di- they didn't take the tubes out. They just disconnected him from the machines. They disconnected him from his piss bag. And they just fucking shoved him out the door, basically. Listen, did Medicare pay for these tubes to be removed? No, that, then there you are. Yeah, yeah, that's extra service, man. Right? Like, who, we, can, we ain't gonna fucking pay for that. Um, yeah, it was it was a whole fucking thing. Rev, I got abducted by EMS and charged fifteen hundred for a two mile ambulance ri- ambulance ride. Oh, <laughs> uh, I remember what was that Twitter exchange? I forget who that was with. Somebody fucking, like, it was like Bernie or somebody who complained about ambulance costs. And somebody was like, it's not your taxi to the hospital. And but people, what it is. yeah, people what like, is then what the fuck is it? <laughs> like, <laughs> the fuck is the point of it then? Yeah. Yeah. Taking the Uber. Um, I kind of thought so. I kind of hate doctors now. Oh, no, no. As the son of a nurse, I've always hated doctors. Just, just embrace it. Embrace it. Doctors are shit human beings. <laughs> The exceptions are good people, right? The, the baseline is basically a sociopath. You have to think you're God. You have to have a God complex to want to be a doctor. They're, they're really sketchy human beings from a, from a position of psychology. And so, Probably. yeah, like don't, don't trust doctors. They're, they're like, you know, take their advice, follow their medical orders, but, you know, get a second and third opinion if you have any hesitancy whatsoever because they're sketchy fucking people. <laughs> like, that's, dude, talk to any nurse about doctors. Like, that's, the job of a nurse is basically to prevent the doctor from killing you. Like, half the fucking time. Like, those orders are rough. The doctors are overworked. They don't give a shit. There's a generation of doctors in this country that are just trying to get to their Jaguar anyway so they can hit the, hit the golf course because that's the, it's a good living. It's a good career, and that's why they picked it up, right? Go talk to the fucking nurses. See how, <laughs> see how many fucking orders would have overdosed patients or had, uh, or had uh, um, um, contraindications on, medica- uh, on medications. It's like, oh, if you mix those two medications, you end up with a fucking stroke, right? Shit like that. Oh, it happens all the time. 
yeah, it's the son of a nurse. I've always hated doctors. <laughs> like, don't think I'm I'm condemning medical industry. Don't think I'm condemning science. Don't think I'm condemning medicine. It's it's doctors as a profession that is the issue. No, you are absolutely right. Like, um, like cornerstone and what makes a uh, doctor psychology is that you have to believe that you know better. Yeah, you know better than the patient. You know, like you. You have authority to declare you have this and this problem and you should take this and this uh, medicine. Yeah. Um, it's derives that. Well, remember one thing, um, especially surgeons, people, um, but uh, doctors are trained to view a patient as, you know, meat sacks before anything else. Mm -hmm. Surgeons are even scarier. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was saying. Like, yeah. they're the train day in, day out on, on you know, um, dead bodies uh, until they're, you know, desensitized to the, like, the suffering of their, you know, patients, basically. Rev says, I told them I was indigent. I told them I couldn't pay. They strapped me to a gurney without my consent and drove me to a loony bin. Yeah. Uh, that's very nice. Cool. Um... <sighs> Heard I found out the hard way the last uh, last year. Uh, Beast said my mom was a nurse before she became a patient. Yeah, thanks so much. You have no idea how much I feel less unsure about that. No, Turd, sincerely, like every fucking nurse, every fucking nurse talks shit about doctors. Sincerely, like it, this is this is like the only thing I can compare it to is like gun owners and cops, right? Like if if you come at them from the outside, nurses will will hold the line. They will hold rank, right? You don't you don't come at the doctors. You don't come at healthcare, right? But if you're inside the conversation, do they shit on doctors nonstop? <laughs> like that's their favorite fucking topic. Is like, yeah, oh, those fuckers, they're insane. They're psychotic. They don't know what they're doing. I wouldn't trust that fucker. Oh, don't go to him. No, he'll fucking kill you, right? Like there is legitimately like because my mom's still a nurse. She still like works with some uh, some companies here in town, and she you know she she coordinates things for them, right? And she has told me like she has given me names of doctors in this town. Don't ever let your friends go to this guy. I have never seen a knee replacement come out of him not infected. Don't ever fucking go to this guy. Don't ever go to this this person. Don't ever let anybody even set foot in this office. They kill people like legitimately like there's behind the scenes. The nurses talk and they share this information. It's the same with the gun owners and the cops. Like if you come at them and get the anti-cop shit, they'll fucking hold the line. But the instant you're hanging out with them on the range and shit and they know you're cool. They're like, oh, yeah, all the cops are terrible with firearms. They're all fucking a joke. They shouldn't have guns at all. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, like it's the same sort of mentality. Um I had a th nurse warming on to get my thumbnail removed no away. Um, seems like every week there's a new story. So-and-so wrote the wrong dosage again. Would have killed the patient. Yeah, beast. It, it's, it's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. Um, it, it is a common thing. Um, Rev, there's maybe two doctor's offices in my entire county. Um, to be infected knee, knee replacements. Oh, it's dude, there is a doctor here in town. I'm not going to fucking name check him um, for legal purposes. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah, like legitimately my mom has given me his name and explicitly said he, he's an orthopedic surgeon. And if you ever hear anybody that you give a shit about, even in the slightest that is going to go to him, tell them not to, because legitimately her, uh, she, she works with multiple home health agencies here in town. They've never not had a patient come out of his office with an infection. He's got a hundred percent infection rate on knee replacements. Do you know how like sketchy that fucking is? Like who the fuck how does he not lose his license? Exactly. Right. Like this is in, this is an indictment of a greater system, right? Like this is, this is, t this is terrifying. Right. And so basically you can't, you cannot rely on the safety you can't rely on the safety net of like review of license reviews and those sorts of things. Can't do it. So you have to find a, 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 well, a, a respected practiced surgeon 
And I can tell you right now, I can tell you right now, if you're in the Las Vegas Valley and you need an orthopedic surgeon, especially a knee, hip, or ankle, um, you want to go to Crivetti. I can fucking name check that dude. Everybody knows. Dude, he's a world class. He he does athletes. Um, he looks like a fucking giant circumcised dick. He's bald as they come. <laughs> And he's like, everybody jokes about it. Like he's got billboards and shit. Everybody knows. Um, but he is, he's legitimately world-class. He's got his own surgery center. He's got his own recovery unit. He's got like, he built the facility out of his practice. He, he, he is a world-class fucking surgeon and he doesn't put up with half assery. So if you ever need like work, like a work like that done in Las Vegas, Crivetti is the name you want to have doing that work. He's got, he's got as good of a fucking rec track record as you can get in this arena. Um, how do you get better care? I'm considering just bypass, bypassing insurance and paying cash. Turd, it's getting to the point where, um, like healthcare vi travel is a thing. Um, like legitimately, um, depending on what you're looking for, Mexico, Costa Rica, India, even Europe in some instances are cheaper in the long run than what you would pay for in America, even with insurance, because the insurance isn't going to cover it. Um, I can say like, I can tell you that like, if you are looking for, um, I love shitting on the docs with the nurses. Yeah, Zippy. I worked at a cancer center under direct supervision of oncologists before they hired a pharmacist. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a whole fucking dude. Oncologist. Jesus Christ. Still in the investigation phase. It depends what you're after, turd. And again, none of this is medical advice. Do not do not rely on me. Consult a doctor. Consult an attorney. P pay attention to the laws and legalities of your locality, right? Like clause, 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 clause. Um, it depends what you're after. Um, I can make one recommendation, which is hilarious, right? This is, this is the thing. And the trans community, go to Mexico. Sure. Go to Mexico. That's, that's, that's where you want to go. If you do it in the U S like forget Europe, Europe is fucking useless for this shit. The UK is impossible, right? <laughs> Fuck all that. Surprise. Um, if you want surgery. If you want, if you want to do any sort of reassignment or non-standard surgery, right? In the U.S., you would have to do the WPATH thing. You'd have to get two letters from psychiatrists and psychologists. You'd have to be on hormones, and you would have to have everybody sign off on it. And then eventually, after a year or two, they will consider your surgery, and then maybe, maybe it will be covered, depending on what state and what insurance company you are working with. Nevada, interestingly enough, is one of the few states that um, covers it, even under Medicaid, um, like the broke people insurance, right? Medicaid in Nevada covers uh, gender reassignment surgery, but you still have to do the WPATH thing. You've got to do the, the X, Y, and Z. You got to every, get everybody to give you permission to do it. Mexico, on the other hand, has some actual world-class um, urologist, gender specialists, and plastic surgeons. And they operate out of a couple of different cities. Interestingly enough, one of them operates out of Tijuana. Why is that interesting? Because it's literally a border crossing with San Diego. Hmm. You can go, you can fly into San Diego, and you can walk across the border. And you can be picked up and taken to a surgery center. And you can have your surgery there for fees that are all things considered reasonable. Re it's reasonable. Um, yeah. So like Mexico is your answer. If you're a member of the trans community and you're like, my country won't let me do this or my country is getting in the way of me doing this or X, Y, or Z, save your fucking pesos and go to Mexico. They'll hook you up and they've got good surgeons for it too. Um, so, but for other things, it depends. Uh, it depends. Weirdo shit. Switzerland's actually good. Like if you don't know what the fuck is wrong with you, <laughs> Switzerland has some like high end doctors, but you're going to pay through the fucking nose for them. 
right? Like they, they've got that. I'm a billionaire and I want the best care kind of care shit going on, right? Like specialty clinics where you don't really know what they're up to, quite frankly. <laughs> like they're doing some sh- sketchy shit as is tradition with Switzerland, right? They're, they're just like, oh yes, neutrality, whatever. Um, they get up to some sketchy shit in Switzerland. Um, so like, yeah, if you, if you've got that, that sort of thing going on, Switzerland is actually kind of good for that. Um, Germany has some really amazing stem cell research going on right now. Um, 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 Belize, I believe has some really, um, good stem cell, uh, research, um, like monoclonal stem cell, um, uh, research, uh, happening as well. Um, yeah, it just sort of depends what you're after and where you, where, how much you're willing to spend. Um, but at the end of the day, a lot of it is cheaper than the U S. Um, there are surgeries that can be done in India. Pennies on the dollar. Pennies on the dollar. And you're going to like private healthcare centers in India. It's not like you're like going with like the riffraff, right? You're not, you're not in a fucking gutter hospital, a gutter clinic in Calcutta, right? Like this isn't how this fucking works. It just costs a shit ton less to do it there, right? I remember a story by a backpacker who um, fell off a back of a, like a, a sort of a tuk-tuk motorbike sort of scenario, right? And shattered his fucking wrist. Right, just absolutely shattered his wrist. And he was like, holy shit, I'm in India, right? Like this is gonna be this is gonna get this is gonna get bad, right? I'm gonna lose my fucking hand or some shit. Right? Went to the best health care that they could provide him, basically. X-rays, pain medications, setting and casting the wrist. It cost him something like in the neighborhood of forty five dollars. No shit. Yeah. He could, he, like, I remember reading his fucking write up on it on one of the travel, uh, travel forums. He's like, I was fucking shocked because he was an American. He's like, holy fuck, man. What the fuck is going on? Why is this this way? Um, I can tell you for a fact, um, like, HIV medications in the U.S. that cost uh, $3,500 for a 30-day supply, you can get for sub-$75-ish in India. Same thing. Same fucking thing. Yeah. Right? Like, that's that's the straight-up retail cost. Like, it, that is, you, multiple middlemen have charged you for that medication at that point, right? Like, the, the profit incentive has been realized, yeah, yeah, it's it's two orders of magnitude less, basically, in cost. So, yeah, it just sort of depends what you're looking for. Um, yeah, once upon a time, the, the, the gender reassignment stuff was Thailand. Don't go there. They're kind of like hack and slash these days, from what I hear. Mexico is quickly becoming the world center for that sort of thing. Um, let's see. Hang on. Um... Loss of income has been higher than cost if I paid cash. Um, people been going to Mexico my whole life. Yeah, Zippy for fucking drugs and shit for sure. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, to be fair, if I could, I probably just haven't. Uh, I just haven't yet. Uh, Turd says passport sixty dollars. Um, that where like our passports are like more than that these days, right? Um, let me check. Uh, yeah, let's see. What are what are our fees associated? There are passports these days. Um, fee calculator. U.S. Um, new passport. We'll just we'll just we'll just we'll just say it's a new passport. Because I already have one, but renewal costs are different than new passports. Um, and a book, standard, standard delivery. Uh, one hundred and forty-five dollars for a U.S. passport. One hundred and forty-five. The passport book itself is one hundred and ten. The execution fee is thirty-five dollars. 
And so if you just want a standard U.S. passport, it's $145 these days. Um, hmm. Yeah. If, if you need it quicker than that, there, you can get it quicker than that. You can get expedited passports and shit like that. Um, let's see. Let me see what the renewal is. Yeah, I still have my passport. No, it's not damaged or mutilated. Um, no, it's not limited validity. Uh, I don't fucking remember what the date of issuance is. I think it's like um, 2016, something like that. Let's do that. Uh, no, I don't require changes. Uh, book. No, I don't want an issue card. No, standard delivery, all that shit. $110. So if you're doing like a passport renewal, it's $110. For a new passport, it's $145. Um, um, yeah. Oh yeah. Get fucking get healthcare. If you're coming here, um, like get travel insurance. Motherfuckers don't ever travel without travel insurance. Look, it, 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 it isn't expensive. It isn't expensive. Get fucking travel insurance. Now, if you're in like a European nation, chances are your your country actually covers you when you're traveling, which is a concept that Americans are just like, I'm sorry, like you get health care and they care. They don't care where you are. What the fuck, man? Like, you know, but yeah, if you're a U.S. citizen, travel insurance, bitch, pay for it. That was, that was a thing, right? One of the point of contention I had with my ex was that she resented me for saying I didn't want to get the, you know, um, U.S. nationality, and the, like that kind of shit was at the back of my mind. Like, if ever we had like kids, um, uh, wanted to, to at least give them the, the, like the French nationality. Because when you emigrate normally to the U.S., you have to lose your initial nationality to become a U.S. citizen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd, I, dude. If I were, if I were your kid, I'd be like, and you did, you like, you took the U.S. citizenship. I'd give you shit till the day we died. I'd be like, dude, bro, what the fuck, man? I could have had French citizenship, you dumb fuck. Right? Like, I could have ditched this shit out if I wanted to. Right? Like, yeah, that's just a smart move on your part. Mm. Um, open GL saw one story where a guy had a heart attack while well, I was thinking it was in France. Top notch care, fifty dollars total when he walked out the door in the end. Sounds about right. In the mm -hmm. US in the US they'd hand you a bill for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's dude, if you don't have coverage, like if you're if you're if you do not have like some of like that like really high end like European insurance where countries are like, yeah, we don't care where you go and we'll cover you whatever X, Y, and Z, right? Motherfucker, you better have travel insurance when you come to the US. We will hand you a bill for a quarter of a million dollars and not blink an eye. And you better believe we'll send that shit back to your country too. You better believe we'll try and collect. That shit's for real. We will try and collect that shit. Um, wobbles, I have both of mine. Good on you. Um, so again, the U.S. government literally won't let me leave. I'm not fucking paying that. Rev, you don't need a passport for the border crossing into Mexico. Um, no shit. No. Um, that you can you can do it on um the the uh i think it's the san it's san isidro um like you literally um you do not have to have a passport to go to tijuana um they don't have to let you in like that's that's quite literally um part of the deal but yeah you you can just cross it's it's like a day crossing you do need a real id though yeah you gotta have you gotta have a proper id you gotta have you gotta have a proper id um let's see um my friend had pancreatitis and was in a coma for almost two weeks woke up to a three million dollar bill yeah it sounds about right um, broke my hand once, went to the sliding scale clinic. They gave me an x-ray and a $1,200 bill. Um, 
Yeah, if you don't want to what go. Is a clinic? Uh, what is a sliding scale clinic? Was that the question? Yes. Uh, basically, they adjust the bill based on how much you make. Which sounds fair, but still. Yeah, so, well, but the broke ass version of that, like Rev is broke as a motherfucker, right? The broke ass version of that is a $1,200 bill. Um, oh, yeah, Distherin. Okay, so here's the deal. If you ever get a bill from a hospital, right? And that bill is just stupid. You're like, I can't fucking pay this. Here's the first thing you do. You call the billing department of the hospital and you say, I am broke as a motherfucker. I cannot pay this bill. So what I'm going to need is an itemized cost list for this bill. All right. What you've just done is triggered two responses within the medical billing industry. That itemized bill you just cut your bill down by two thirds cost. Guaranteed. Garen fucking teed. By asking for that itemized bill, what they're going to have to do is use the master, uh, the master price list. And all of a sudden, the cost comes down from the what we in charge, what we charge the insurance companies or the government to what we would charge you. So the price immediately usually decreases by about two thirds right out of the gate. Now, when you uh, when you say I am broke as a motherfucker and I cannot pay this at all, what happens is it triggers a series of nonprofit mechanisms behind the scenes. Essentially, they can't make you pay. They can't. Here's the long and short of it. Um, there's a couple of options that hospitals have now. Medical clinics, doctors' offices are different entirely. But if you go to a hospital and they give you this bill and you say, I cannot pay, there is a high probability what they will do is ask for proof of um, income. So IRS tax statement for the last year, these sorts of things, right? And they will ask you to sign, write a letter or sign an affidavit to the effect of, yeah, I'm broke as a motherfucker and I can't pay you shit. And then they'll just write off the bill. That's, that's literally what they'll do. They'll just write it off. They can claim it on their taxes. They can use a charitable donation system. They'll just write it off entirely. Now, if they do not do that, if it does what Rev had happen, the, if it they send it to a collections agency, right, declare bankruptcy. Medical bankruptcy is the number one cause of bankruptcy in this country. Court systems deal with medical bankruptcy all the time. Declare bankruptcy. If you really are broke as a motherfucker already, right? It's like, oh, it'll go on my credit score. Yeah, who gives a shit? You're already, your credit score is dog shit already probably, right? It doesn't matter. In seven years, it'll fall off the, the credit score, right? Like Rev said, it was, they were chasing him for eight years. That's eight years of a collections agency chasing you. In seven, the bankruptcy would have been off your record entirely. Just declare bankruptcy. And no, it's not like the office. You just can't yell, I declare bankruptcy. There's a legal process. But declare bankruptcy. Just fucking, they can't come at you for it. They cannot come after you for that, uh, for that money. Just write it off. Use the system for what it's used. Dude, bank, fucking Donald Trump declared bankruptcy, what, seven, eight times? Right? Like rich people, corporations declare bankruptcy all the fuck time. Don't be afraid of it. They put a stigma on it. They try and penalize you for it. They try and attach stuff to it. But at the end of the day, there is a mechanism to write off this debt. Use it. There you go. Um, Let's see. It, it, Rev, I, I, I get it. Calm down, man. Calm down. You get a little excited there. Um, this is why I go to the docs eight months apart then every th uh, the, uh, rather than every three months like they, uh, they want me to, says Krusty. Yeah. Yeah, they'll charge up a fucking ass for it. Um, I have lab work that I have done regularly that like if I were paying full price for that lab work, it's thousands and thousands of dollars. Every few months. Like it, it, it legitimately. Yeah. 
And it's, it's just, it's fucky. Like I had dual insurances for ages, ages, right? Two insurance companies covering my ass. Come January, everything would reset. All your deductibles reset. So you have to pay out of pocket. So you're paying for, for medications out of fucking pocket, right? Like, because your insurance won't cover it. You're like, I have dual insurance. Yeah, neither of them are going to cover that because um, um, because because your deductibles have been reset and you have to pay out of pocket before uh, into that deductible before they'll actually cover it, right? Like it, it's like holy shit. And then specialty medications. If you do have like dual insurance, you've got a primary and secondary insurance coverage, right? You're like, oh, I'm gonna be I'm I'm gonna be good, right? No, because if you have a specialty medication, say you're a cancer patient, right? Oncology medications and that sort of thing. It's all specialty pharmacy. Every insurance company is in on this grift. They all have their own specialty pharmacies now, and so they require you to go through them. They've vertically integrated a portion of the industry. Um, right. So example, um, United Healthcare and say Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield, right? Okay. So you have United Healthcare for your primary, you've got Blue Cross Blue Shield for your secondary, right? They each have their own, uh, specialty pharmacy. Anthem, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield's insurance will not cover the remainder of cost for uh, for uh, uh, for United Healthcare specialty pharmacy because you're required to use their in-house specialty pharmacy, but United Healthcare will not cover Blue Cross Blue Shield's specialty pharmacy because they require you to use theirs, and since they're your primary insurance, you have to use their specialty pharmacy. But see, you didn't cover your full deductible, or there's a remainder of cost because we only cover seventy percent of the cost of this medication, or fifty percent in the instance of specialty pharmacy medications, right? So you're responsible for fifty percent of this. Well, I have a secondary insurance. Oh well, sorry, since it's a specialty medication, your secondary insurance requires you to use their pharmacy but I can't use either or but yes welcome to the American insurance industry welcome to the American healthcare industry this is a very real situation that exists every day in America and I've dealt with it personally before that's what you did at the cancer center specialty pharmacy mm, yeah yeah welcome well go ahead they're, they're very much in the, in the business of not paying you yeah oh yeah um I've been fucked so hard by specialty pharmacy. They've screwed me out of months of medicine just by going slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what freedom is. Exactly. Um, I had surgery that I thought was paid for but wasn't. Found out that they sold my debt to a debt collections law firm pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And I got a court summons over it. Right after I moved out of state, summons never hit my hand. Suddenly out of reach and they never tried to track me down and pursue it again. I only know about it because I was told uh, – because we were told it got there in the mail. Yep. GL, it sounds about right. Um. Let's see. I got a letter shortly after Trump got elected saying I was no longer eligible for Medicaid. Oh, you were one of those places. Um, oh, yeah, Arkansas. The only time I've ever had insurance when I was a kid. Um, our kids first yeah, and when Obama was president. Uh, Ross, yeah, he called him daily for the specialty pharmacy. Yeah, I, I luckily, like, my my specialty pharmacy now that I deal with, they've they've had, they haven't dropped the ball really too much. Um, interestingly enough, FedEx has dropped the ball because they use commercial mail systems to send medications. And FedEx is just like, yeah, we look at fucking lost the medication as far as we know. Um, it's gone missing. And so then you have to get FedEx, like you literally have to get your specialty pharmacy on the phone and they have to get FedEx on the phone with you on the line and you have to do a conference call and they have to get a manager or supervisor over at FedEx to verify that they classify this package as lost and then they have to get a pharmacist on the line for the specialty pharmacy and they have to uh, then reissue the medication, right? And it, so the new medication comes and in the one instance that it happened for me, the medication comes and then the next day FedEx delivers the original shipment. <laughs> and so I call the pharmacy. I'm like, I don't want to get billed for this shit, right? Like, is this, is this a thing, right? Like it has been marked as delivered, right? Like I don't want like anything, like what's the deal, 
pharmacist gets on the line. He goes, as far as le- as far as the financial or legal liability for you is concerned, that medication has been fully written off. He says, I am supposed to instruct you to destroy that medication. This, these are his words, by the way. This dude literally got on the line and said, I am to instruct you to destroy that medication. You think this motherfucker wasn't giving me the wink and the nod as best he could, right? Like he's being recorded as he says this, right? Like he's covering his ass as best he could. He's telling me, right? Like I have to tell you to destroy that medication. Oh, okay, cool. All right, I will do that. All right, you have a great day. All right, thanks. Yeah, like that's like, holy shit, man, that's that's dealing with the specialty pharmacies and the insurance companies in America. This is this is what it looks like. Right. And I, I'm sure to like somebody in France, this is batshit insane, isn't it? Like, well, one thing you have to know is we cannot in France like a pharmacist and it has to be a licensed pharmacist cannot own more than one pharmacy. So, do you not have chain pharmacies like CVS and Walgreens? No. Holy shit. Like, yeah, that's mind-blowing. Like, you guys oh. limit pharmacies to a singular license. Yes. Well, there's one exception. If you, you can have two. If one is in a, a mountain, like touristy mountain uh, city or town, and the other is at the um, on the coast, basically. That's the only exception, which is bizarre. But dude, 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 fucking the Americans are losing their fucking minds right now, right? Like they're they're legitimately like, whoa, wow, wow, right. what? Like oh. Europe confuses me. Like y- yeah, like legitimately, the Americans are like, well, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, though there is some integration because there are chains of uh, medicine delivery systems. So basically, you would have the huge, you know, warehouse with all the like, medicine, and you have either the cooperative or the OCP. Oh there, there are different brands uh, that will deliver you three times a day, and there's like the big volume delivery systems. So Exxon is asking right out of the gate, does France have issues related to lack of pharmacies as a result of this? No. Hmm. Like we, we limit them to, okay, they, they must be a hundred yard uh, between two pharmacies in uh, cities and 300 meters, well, since 300 yards uh, in you know rural areas. So in cities... 100 yards apart in rural yeah. areas, 300 yards apart, so you don't overlap yeah. and overcompete. Yes. And all pharmacies are required to have a licensed pharmacist, and you can't, like, double yes. up your license on multiple locations. Yes. So you can't have, like, CVS and Walgreens chain pharma. Jesus oh. fucking Christ. This is, all right, Americans, Americans, pay attention. Pay fucking attention. This is how bad we're getting fucked. All right. After all the shit we've just talked about, then we get the outside perspective. It's like, yeah, that shit just doesn't exist here. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, damn, there's a CVS or Walgreens on every other corner out here. Yeah, no, straight up. Like they're on every fucking corner here. Like here, let's the fucking uh, let's. Uh, maps dot, yeah, let's just fucking use Google because it's going to be the fucking, like, that's, dude, they'll have the best listings for this shit. Uh, let's see. Pharmacies. All right. See all these? Look at all these fucking red dots. Walgreens, Walgreens, Smith's, CVS, Vaughn's, Walgreens, CVS, Walgreens, CVS, Walgreens, Smith's, CVS, Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, fucking, 
<laughs> I mean, and it, just like anytime you go out to the like residentials here, we'll fucking, oh, North Town, fucking North Town. Look at this fucking North Las Vegas. Where are your pharmacies? That's hilarious. There we go. CVS, <clears throat> Walgreens, CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, right next door to each other. CVS, <laughs> like this is this is literally pharmacies for us. Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, 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 Walgreens, fucking Walgreens. Welcome to pharmacies in America. Completely monopolized. Right. So if you take a look at my screen, give me a sec. Um, so there we are in, well, St. Dennis. It's uh, a town mm -hmm. where I worked as a specialty. Um, you know, I, I made specialty medication. I was a technician. Um, so in this street, you'll uh, Walking Street, by the way. You have a first first pharmacy here, right? Let's uh, go further. I must be... Where are, where are I? Where the fuck am I? It's going to be a little... Where um, are... Where, okay, so I have a few questions. Where are yes. all the Walmarts? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the... We're in like the center of the city, so you you won't see. Uh, da, 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 da. I must be. Is there is there a Dollar General nearby? Oh, yes. uh, kind of. Uh, I think there was a dollar store. No, it, it, it's shoes. Shoes now. Fuck me. Um. Yes, here 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 is where I worked. It's like the, it's now come them the 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 building. Um. Uh, must be remade. Du, 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 du. Oh yeah, that's a good point, Crix. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. There's a KFC. There's a KFC. Crix, yes, Crix, yes, yes. Crix was asking about McDonald's. We got a KFC, Crix. Well, there, there's a KFC at the start of the street. I didn't show it. I don't know the one down that street over there. Wait, why do uh, they have so many there. KFCs? Mm -hmm. Why do they have so many KFCs? There's just one. The two other are McDonald's. Oh, okay. They're, they're McDonald's too. All right, all right. I was like, that's a lot of KFCs. Like, what's the obsession with KFC? Uh, yeah. Well, um, by the way, there's only a KFC because there's a big black population in the town. Ah. <clears throat> anyway. Oh, Jesus. Pub um, public, <laughs> public is asking, why isn't this just a copy-paste city? I'm confused and scared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, um, this is the St. Louis Basilica where uh, some kings of France are buried. Oh, fuck uh, it, yes. Yeah. Exactly, public <laughs> KFC. Thank God, civilization. <laughs> so, yeah, so another pharmacy here, and uh, I was trying to go up, I think my... That was my uh, first thought, Estrella. That was my very first thought, Estrella. <laughs> Why is there room for people to walk? There should be room for highways and other yeah. roads. Uh, well, to oh, be shit. fair, oh, so what's this? What's this? Wait, 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 wait. What's this shit on the left? This looks like an, a market of some sort where people can buy like fresh fruits and stuff. It is. Why? 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 Did, why isn't that just a Walmart? Because it's. Uh, like within a city. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you want, uh, okay, let, let's take a look at. Oh, well, we teleported. I didn't want this. Um, uh, where's, so where, where's my shit? Um, this is the place where French kings are buried, just down the road from the KFC. <laughs> yep. We really did invade the rest of the world with this shit. It is hilarious. Um, 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 sorry, I'm a little. Come on, Google, show me that. Okay, so that's Basilica, that's theirs. Okay. There should be... Excel, exactly. We're, we're going for a cultural victory and a, milita uh, a militaristic victory at the same time. Oh, I can see it. Cool. Uh, where is it? Oh, yeah. Rev, Rev would just like to point out that uh, fresh fruit isn't a thing. Everyone knows peaches come from a can. Um, yes, obviously. 
De Gaulle is it even De Gaulleism couldn't stop McDonald's. Um, okay. Here. Why aren't cops breaking shit to shut down that sus activity? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, and- it's it, it is it dude it's it's just dark humor for americans like we're just yeah. like fucking i don't understand why where is all where is all the rank capitalism well it's there don't worry about it uh it's just wait i see a burger joint i see a what, roar burger oh there's a pharmacy yes pharmacy principal de something <laughs> something something <laughs> Uh, where's the bur- fucking burger? Good question. This is, dude, I, I honestly, this is, this, for somebody who lives in, like, okay, so, let me, while you're doing that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up. Yeah. Right, like, um, let me get down to street level. Um, right, and let me, let me pull up, it was like a typical, yeah, right. And drop on, yeah, drop, just drop on that one. That's fine. All right. All right. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is what we have. All right. This is, this yeah. is literally what our, what our places look like. It's, it's just this. It is the same fucking building after building they all look exactly the same it's the exact same fucking plants everywhere none of them are native by the way all these palm trees are non-native um they're they're just absolutely like completely fucking weird and then you get into like let's see where is where's a good commercial area um let's see Oh, you know what? Yeah, this this part of town will serve just fine. Um, all right. Let me get out on the road here. Where am I? On Pebble. All right. So, yeah, here's 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 every fucking every shopping center in the U.S. Right? Like, there's a there's a coffee place. There's a fucking, this is just, this is just it. There's, there's the auto thing. There's the gas station. There's a circle K fucking like literally it's just mini mall shopping plaza after shopping plaza after shopping plaza. And you eventually just, it's, it's just, it's all the same strode shit. You notice the buildings are exactly the same fucking style buildings everywhere you go. It's literally just the same boring crap. Everywhere you go in this in this town, mini mall, mini mall, shopping center, shopping center, fucking de- development. <laughs> it's fucking depressing as shit. So it took me a while. Um, um, you know, fruits, vegetable. Here we have the uh, the butcher who's uh, selling horse, believe it or not. Right. And here's what's um, like the supermarket I go when I do my groceries. That's like basically. That's not a supermarket. That's not what a fucking supermarket looks like. Come on, hang on. Let's see. Um, this is this is what a supermarket looks like. Um, let's see. Where's where's a Walmart? There's a Walmart. Um, oh, that's not what I fucking meant to drag to. Um, let's see. Where is? There we go. Drop there. All right, so here's, this is, see, this is, this is how you get, this is how you get a fucking, like, you know, this is, this is what the shopping area looks like, right? There's the fucking, the gas place, the Taco Bell, like, you know, what, you know, that's, that's what you got to do. There's Taco Bell, and then there's the Sam's Club right next door to the Walmart, because it's all the fucking same company anyway, and, That's just, you know, you do your wholesale shopping here. You can get your gas at Sam's Club, which is, of course, you know, also a Walmart fucking company, basically. It's all fucking the the Waltons. Um, and then here's, here's, this is, this is what it fucking looks like, right? Like this is, this is what a store is supposed to look like. I don't understand what the fuck this is about. Like this is this is some weird ass shit. I this is some fucking Frenchy commie bullshit that I don't get. 
Those are their their future <laughs> spirit stores, dude. Do you know Do you know about fucking spirit Halloween stores? Oh yeah, they're amazing. They're f- absolutely fucking amazing. Like they just they rent a fucking place for like thirty days, just disused, always in the same uh, different, pl- uh, di- always in different locations. They're they're absolutely brilliant. Um, everything's generic now. Give me the seventies, dude. Krusty, I wasn't even alive in the seventies, and I'm down for it. Like I'm nostalgic for it. All right, so I'm going to give you a tour of French suburbia. That's this is like basically the the house I grew up in. Um, let's let's get the shit out of here. It's the exact same Walmart as my Walmart. Wither. It's because all Walmarts are the same. <laughs> Uh, other than you're gonna have the the high school, like middle school I went to. It's that's not very important because the contrast is with the you know um, apartment building, but like basically like this uh, road bisects like suburban houses versus apartment buildings. Um, but let's get to the um, you no know, hypermarket, like the what will resemble more your. Um, like, um, business, uh, no, commercial area. So, like, you have your, um, like, that would be the Home Depot, like, equivalent here. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to interrupt. One, Aka goes, that's not true. Sometimes we put the grocery on the left side instead of the right. Estrella says, actually, there's only one Walmart. The entrance to the one you think is in your area is just a portal to the one Walmart. <laughs> Subtracts. Oh. Uh, All right. So here it is. What qualifies as a commercial a- a- area where I live? Right. I mean, we kind of have these, but I mean, they're always way more generic than this and soulless. Well, that's already pretty soulless. I, I, okay. Look, Frenchie. Don't tell. Don't talk to an American about a soulless commercial center. All right, our dick is bigger on this one. <laughs> you don't know soulless. <laughs> look, look at what we did to the croissant with McDonald's. All right, just t- trust me on this one. <laughs> you mean the Chris sandwich? Yeah, the Chris sandwich. All right. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, so just trust me on this one. <laughs> If there's one thing Americans know, it's soulless commercialism. Who is a church? Um, this looks like this. Lo- this is reminding me of like an East Coast town, right? Like this is the difference uh, in America. Like if you're on the East Coast, especially in Northeast, uh, you see a lot more of this style because, again, it's closer to the European influence. Bunch of y'all motherfuckers came over here and settled that shit, right? It makes sense. Oh, yeah. Um, but the further west you go, the worse it gets. And uh, by the way, uh, do you see the, those like corny, quaint stones that are used to um, like like cobblestone on the facade here? Yeah, I'm assuming that's a facade that's uh, manu- mass manufactured and installed um, by. It is in- not. Oh, it is actually, mm. it's actually stone that has okay. Uh, it's a specific kind of stone that is not very useful in and of itself, but it's usually found on top of gypsum deposits. So it's blasted away, and people have nothing to do with it. So it's you, since it's very porous, like there are teeny t- tiny bubbles in there, it's very um, heat resistant, basically. So it's a very good uh, uh, insulator. Isolation yeah. material. Yeah, it's a good insulator. Yeah, it's a good insulator, so it's used all over the place because um, up the hill there's um, like gypsum and, uh, and deposit and plaster factory. Have you guys considered um, like mass producing it oh. using cheap immigrant labor and shipping it abroad? Because that's what uh, we would do with it. Uh, for, for, for shits and giggles. Oh. oh, no, that's the unemployment of it. This used to be a, um, a police station. Oh well. I, hey, a question: Have you ever been to a, a Burger King in France? No, never. 
Okay. Well, if Aka can't answer that one, Aka one was wondering if a French Burger King has a croissant sandwich because that's a st- that's a thing here, and we just want to know how bad it is. <laughs> like, like, could you imagine a Frenchman walking into a Burger King and ordering a croissant sandwich? Ugh. I think that I think it might be illegal in in France, Aka. To be perfectly honest, <laughs> some sort of some sort of cultural crime, maybe. Uh. Uh, anyway, uh, that's the lake. Oh, and of course, um, yeah, of course, there's a lake in this town. Of course. Well, it's it's the next time order. So, yeah, look, our very efficient train system. T- um, train. Train. What? You mean the you mean the things that go between your states to carry coal and like mass produced consumer goods? Well, th- this one take, like takes twenty minutes to get you to Paris. Wait, wait, wait! You ride the train, or, like yeah. like a hobo? Like you get like a little hobo sack and you hop on the back and you're not supposed yeah, to be there? Basically, but you also need a ticket. Oh, oh! So you have like commuter trains? That's oh, that's an interesting yeah. thing. Yeah, that's I'm okay. I'm not familiar with that as an American. Um, and there be some bougie ass uh, fucking property. <laughs> Aka, you mean the things that are dirty, dirty, overpriced, and always arrive forty minutes late? Now, Aka, it sounds like you were taking trains in Britain. Um, look at those motherfuckers. Um. This is a gorgeous little neighborhood, by the way. Oh, yeah. Well, again, like the next t- town over uh, around the lake is very bougie. Like they have a casino. Um, they, yeah, that's. Um, this is very nice. This is adorable. Yeah. Uh, and the lake. Dude, I'd... There's one there. That's... Dead. Yeah. That's fucking nice, man. American mm-hmm. suburbs kill me. Says whether... Oh, yeah. No, there are, our suburbs are fucking rough. Um, like, here, I'll fucking... I'll show you, like, one of the developments here in town over mm-hmm. on the south side. Um, Like, where is Anthem? There's Anthem. Um, this, this entire thing that you're seeing is one mass, what's called a master planned community. All right. So here's a school. This school is a part of like the commercial community even. Let's see if I can get in. No, it's gated. Um, cause this, this is, this entire area is like a giant fucking gated community. Um, here you go. Like just the same fucking existence, the same fucking pattern over and over and over and over. It's the exact same fucking thing. Like just, just repeated ad infinitum. This entire commercial area, part of the master planned community. It's all put in and planned along with this fucking, this community. Let's see if I can find a, 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 yeah, here we go. And then here, here's here's an example of a Las Vegas suburb. Right. Just the same house over and over and over again. They're just the same fucking thing. There's like four different floor plans and you get to choose from them and that's it. Like, and you just go up the street, here we'll turn a corner and it's the exact same fucking shit again, over and over. Welcome to the American suburbs, especially in Las Vegas. Does France have HOAs? Probably not. Uh, what's that? A uh, homeowners association. Oh, uh, wait, wait, okay. Um, um, not that I know of. Um, yeah, this is, this is fucking Rev's bumfuck nowhere. They literally have nothing. They've got some apartments. They've got a church... Um, they've got a Dollar General, um, a McCarter Mart, which I've never heard of. Oh, that's like some small store. Uh, mowing and handyman st- services, a truck stop. Oh, I bet the truck stop's a fucking thing and a half, Rev. 
Yeah, like this is just bum fucking nowhere, Arkansas. Like the, there's literally one of the, the the points on the map is a cemetery. Like that's, yeah. Uh, could it, gonna move to France. Be right back. Yeah, right. I mean, anyway, so you were talking about schools. So this is the town where I studied. It's in like southwest ish. France, uh, and they have this uh, middle school, uh, no, high school for 3,000 students. What a weird so, fucking design. Yeah, I'll say. This is not normal. <laughs> if you like. I mean, we've caught, we'll say, on scale. Our, I mean, ours are here. Let's, um, I'll, I'll just, let me get a high school here. Um, all of ours are built by the exact, um, they're literally built by um, prison companies. I'm not kidding you. Um, if you notice the like what it looks like here, how everything is facing inwardly, and there's this central courtyard, and it's all of these <laughs> institutional buildings, this is like quite literally our schools are built by um, by prison companies it's it's the same sort of pattern they wall them in they do these central courtyards um and then like look this is how you gain entry to the fucking school right like you pass through these gateways and then they can close and lock it behind you basically so you are literally walled in into the school like it is a self-enclosed environment um, well we kind of do that for security security purposes too um, yeah, he, here's here's the central courtyard where where you can get some fucking PT. Like, yeah, it's dude, like, mm. but quite literally, like, it's it's not like a byproduct or like oh for security. The same companies that build prisons in America build high schools. It's it's this I am Jack's total lack of surprise. Yeah. yeah. All right, train station, high speed rail. Ha oh. ha. Uh, where so where I'm going from there? So the th three damn schools I attended in that town are. Come on, do the thing. Come ah, will you? Fucking Google Maps, do the thing. Is that a I, wait? Yeah. Are you telling me that's a school? Well, so uh, specifically, well, we're gonna land here. This used to be uh, a, a smoking, well, a paper manufacturer who uh, did a lot of uh, smoking paper. Uh, a, yeah, for cigarettes and, and shit, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's been converted into a fine art school and museum. So we, like, we had our workshops here. Our um, not very right. Uh, this yeah. was the. Printing, printing workshop, uh, supply warehouse, uh, and like just next to it, there's the uh, paper museum. Museum de pipi. Yes, yeah, <laughs> And uh, right next to it, this is the other um, school I attended, which was a monastery and. Uh, uh, no, it's, it wasn't the, uh, I, I, I have something to say about this. No, it was the Nile. Paper the Nile. Um, and what's, what's, what's funny with what's known as no Rizla is, so, uh, Uh, ever heard of this brand of uh, smoking paper? No. Secret paper. So the, what's funny about it? It's um, it's no known as Rizla, but it's not that. It's paper. It's rice paper. So uh, oh. R, R, R I Z is rice, and that's a cross. So it's the um, smoking paper. Well, rice smoking paper is a cross. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, yeah, I fucking wither too much unique, fancy architecture. <laughs> like, um, and what was that rev that you fucking threw my way here? Oh, the fucking, uh, high school that rev went to like, 
Yeah. Uh, or the school, like, pro- yeah, fucking listed as a high school, but holy shit. Um, I, that, holy shit, man. I've seen literal doctor's offices bigger than this. Yeah, I, I was thinking this looks like a cult compound. Yeah, like this is, dude, this is itty bitty. Bumfuck nowhere, Rev. Holy shit, man. That's fucking gorgeous. Like that's a that's a common yeah, I like that. That's a thing. So yeah, my video game school was in there. This is a comic uh, museum. So like there's a whole lot of uh, comic books in there. <laughs> yeah, people fucking psycho. That's a castle. <laughs> like Well, it was a monastery. It was a mon- uh, So it was a monastery, way, psycho. So this has been colonized by the video game school, so these are more of the classrooms and workshops. Um, and by the way, is there still a pharmacy in there? Probably. Oh. I don't think. All right. Well, fuck. All right. Fuck. Just, just on behalf of, like, all Americans, <clears throat> just fuck you. Yes. Just, just fuck and- you is the other school I attended here, which was a maternity. It was, a, oh, well, you, you, you branched off, all right. No, 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 I, I fucking already went back when you were... This is deserved, all right. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, so you guys stop this. Um, boom, 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 we're... Boop. Like that, that, yeah. like, yeah. Like, on behalf of all Americans. Um... Yeah, open GL. Now I have a problem. I'm against colonialism, but it's been colonized by video game schools for classrooms. What do? <laughs> uh, Crick said, I feel like we went on a nice little walk with you for twos. Um, my jealousy boner is raging, says Beasticle. Um, yeah, I went to the children of the corn school and I'm, whoa, was that impressive? Uh, says, uh, uh, oh, malls, uh, malls, bippus. Um, yeah, thank you. People are thanking you for the field trip. Uh, uh, well, then again, like it was three fucking art school in a very nice city in you know um, provincial France. You, you wait, as Estrella is asking, you didn't even have asbestos in your school? No rats? Oh no, I I used like I went to a, a university that was in the process of removing asbestos. Hey, see, there we go. There we go. On uh, on behalf of uh, uh, us Canadian too, but for different reasons, says Rai. <laughs> Low, of lower Canadian, yeah. Um, I want. I just Wither said. I just want architectural vengeance against the vehicular industry. Um, Estrella said, "No, we keep that shit. It's decoration." Um, yeah, dude. This is fucking- my reminder that the the plot of Who Framed Roger Rabbit is real. Yeah. Yeah, we, <laughs> we we dude, cars ruined our cities. Cars ruined our cities. They're they're absolute dog shit entities to live in because of the fucking automobile industry. That that's that's exactly what fucking happened. Is we we just we kowtowed to the automobile industry and oh here you guys want to see with the like this is our our um our cities look like uh, i've always said this like our our especially in the west our cities look like um uh bacterial colonies right here i'll just zoom in look at this shit it just it looks like a fucking bacterial colony it, it it's just the same bullshit over and over and over. It, it's so fucking depressing. <laughs> In the immortal words of James from the Internet, Lord of the land. And if I accumulate enough money, I will be Lord of the cul de sac. <laughs> yep. Yep. Lord of the cul de sac. Oh, fucking. I live on a cul de sac. Yep, I, I, I live in a cul-de-sac. Um, uh, let's see. Also, when I was in high school, half the trucks in the parking lot had 
uh, had uh, four thirty out six uh, rifles in the back. Never once had a shooting. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking you know, good old fashioned like rifle racks. Um, let me old school too. Fucking um, if Krusty's still here, he probably remembers that shit too. Um, shit like this. Just fucking back window rifle racks. I prefer the overheads, though. You're, um, here you go, Rev. You ever seen an overhead rack? I like the overheads. You can get to them easier, too. Oh, shit. 68 El Camino with three Remingtons. <laughs> my uncle's house, my father was grandfather was born in double Adobe old school character type home. No cul de sac. Rye, like a like a thousand percent illegal in Canada. Um <laughs> Craig's America, fuck you. Um, yeah, like that's super common here. Um, my my stepfather tells stories about when he was going to school, like elementary school as a kid. He and his friends would like take their rifles with them, right? They'd have like what we would call a plinker, right? Like a twenty-two, right? Like he and his friends would would take their rifles, and this isn't some fucking like rural we hunt for squirrel shit, right? He, I've told stories about my stepfather. He grew up with fucking money, right? They would take their their rifles to um to school, and they'd like they'd literally all the friends would have like twenty-two rifles. Um, like Remingtons and shit like that. And they just shoot at random shit on the way to school and way from school. And they'd fucking put the, they put the rifles in a closet when they were at school. Yeah. Um, that's just, yeah, uh, it's, it's ingrained in America. It's ingrained into America. So fucking, um, Oh yeah, Rev. Like that was that was common as to recently even. That was common in my lifetime. Um, Rev said my dad tells me about fist fights behind the school in the seventies, SoCal with no cops. Um, we had yeah, we had fights with no cops. I can tell you like I can tell you when it ended. Um, it was after Columbine. For real, I was a sophomore in high school when Columbine happened. Um, and basically everything changed after Columbine. It was like 9-11 for schools, right? Like everything in society changed after 9-11. Columbine changed everything in schools. That they're, they're up until 1998. Basically it was, it was the same as like all those old stories about like, you know, fist fights in the parking lot after school and shit like that happened in my lifetime. I, I saw it. Um, there was, there was a story I've told before that, um, about how one of the, one of the white dudes from the baseball team, varsity baseball team was like, uh, fucking with this Mexican dude. And there's that, like, look, it's going to be racist as shit, right? I'm going to say some shit here. This is the saying it's from a, it's from a bygone era. It, it's just, it's, it's, it's a thing that used to be said, all right? It was common as fucking water in my school. For this saying to exist. All right. I don't agree with it. I understand it's racist. I understand it's old timey. This white dude was messing with this one. The varsity baseball player was messing with this Mexican dude. And um, they wanted to fight in the parking lot after school. Well, you mess with one bean, you mess with the whole burrito. <laughs> Shit. Right. All right. Crick's got it. Crick's got it ahead of time. Bean burrito. Crick's got there before I even said it. Crick's knew it. Yep. It, it's, dude, it's, 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 it was, it was super common. It was a super fucking common thing that was said for a while. Um, and so the, um, the fucking, uh, baseball player fucking rolled up and there's just a, a fucking collective of Mexican dudes there and they thought they won up them and the whole baseball team rolled up behind him and they just took their bats out of their fucking cars and they're like, you want to do this or do you want to fight fair? And so, yeah, it, it, it was like, oh, okay. Then, so the two dudes squared off and they just fought, fought it out. 
right? It was like that. I was like, okay, like, look, if you're going to jump our boy, fuck off. We're here with baseball bats, right? Like, but we're willing to just sit on the sideline and let these two dudes kick the shit out of each other if, you, if that's how we want to let this go down. And they did. Like, that's, that's literally it in the parking lot. Just fucking two dudes squaring off, kicking the shit out of each other while all of their bros made sure that it stayed fair, you know? Um, so yeah, like, and, uh, remember the game smear the queer rev. I do remember the game smear the queer. I enjoyed playing smear the queer smear. The queer was a, is a fun game. It's a terrible name, but it's a, it's a fun fucking game. It, the, the, the wow. strategy, the strategy behind smear the queer is a really interesting strategy. It's okay. So if you have the ball, the entire group's job is to tackle you. But you can throw the ball in the air at any time of your own volition. And then the goal is to catch the ball, right? Like somebody else catches the ball and then spends as much time as possible holding the ball. But again, the entire group shifts on a dime and now they're trying to tackle you, right? And again, you can throw it at any given time. And so, yeah, there's, there's some very interesting like sportsmanship and logic find a uh, logic pathing behind the game. It's just a pretty fucked up name. That's all given its intent. <laughs> but how, how do you score? There's no, no, that's not. No, it is. It okay. is played. It is literally played for the fun of it. There's no scoring system unless you're keeping time of, unless you've got somebody literally on the side tracking the amount of time that somebody has spent with the ball. The general consensus is there's not really like a winner or a loser. It, it's just played because it's a fun activity. It's the kind of shit dumb boys do, right? You've got a, you got a ball, you got a field of grass, you got a game of smear the queer. Yeah. Discern, that's how you would score it. But I can tell you of all the times that I played that game, never fucking, never, never kept score. You ready? You ready to do it, Agent Trey? Agent. You ready? We got a fucking taker here. 300 bits if you're confident enough to show me your browser history. You ready? You want to you want to put up? I'm good for my word. You going to you going to put the money up? Cuz I got my finger on the button to toggle over to the window. I'll fucking show you. I'll 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 pull it. I will scroll through the entire thing. I Agent, you got my word. Do it. Pull the trigger, I'll pull the trigger. As soon as I see the biddies pop, I'll put it on the screen. Yeah, I got no problem with this. Never shit gave a shit about score. It was about having fun. Yeah, Rev, that's the same way. Same way. It was it was just about fucking doing it. Playing playing that game was just a matter of like actually just having fun. It was bored boys in a field. Um, I played it oftentimes when um, like there were other sports activities. Like you know you're hanging out outside of a football stadium or that sort of thing. Um, Zippy, I guess you missed the last two installments of Dgen Story Time, dude, bro. I ain't got no shame. I ain't got no shame, right? Like this is, this is an easy one for me to win. So put the biddies up. Let's do this. Um, but is it against the US? No. Nah. Um, cause Kai told us about being fisted with Crisco. His browser history is small potatoes. <clears throat> Uh, that and Frisbee. I didn't play much Frisbee. I mean, come on, agent. 
I sh- I live shame free vicariously through you guys. <laughs> very, just, I, very happy to provide a service, Cricks. Happy to provide a service. Um. Oh, by the way, did you hear what uh, Real Radon told you last time you raided him? No, no, I didn't. He, he, he needs you to provide a date when you're available for f- uh, fun oh. RPG, right? Um, yeah, that's that fucking providing a date is a whole fucking ball game with me, but duly noted, duly noted. Um, hey, somebody who like talks to me regularly in chat and or on discord, tell me, uh, tomorrow during the stream and the next day during the stream also like remind me a few times real rad Hom needs me to get my ass together and get a date so that I can join his D and D session. Somebody just harp on me for this, please, please. And thank you. I'm just going to crowdsource this shit. Hive mind for the win. Um, Siri set an appointment for <laughs> Basically, right? So it's a fucking streamer version of saying, telling Siri to do something. Um, <clears throat> what, what happened to Broham? I'm totally willing to show my fucking browser history here. Hmm. Funny how that worked. Oh, well. Thank you, Beast. Now keep doing it in the future. Fucking 60 in high school. How can you learn anything with 60 students? God damn it. Dude, that was fucking, yeah, that was a big school for his area. I had um f- I had just short of um uh, uh four thousand students in my school and my freshman class was the largest they had seen. I think we were like twelve hundred students strong. So there were people that I graduated with that I never fucking talked to or even interacted with, like straight up. My graduating class was fourteen people. Back in elementary, I was in a class of forty. Those as rev. 14 fucking people. Some rural fucking shit right there. Um, 48 and Zippy's graduating class. Jesus. Um, there you go. Tag him. I think 20 to 30 was standard for my school in Australia. This is a uh, dis- Um, Yeah, like we, we had 14. I think it was 1,200 or 1,400 in my incoming freshman class. We were the largest the school had ever seen. There was about 4,000 in total in the school. Um, My high school had 1,800 students, and I think it was 1,500 capacity. Um. Crix is just complimenting your laugh for twos. Crix mm, said, Crix said he loves your laugh. Well, I've been told it's um, contagious. It's it's very French. <laughs> it's, very, mm-hmm. it's very French. Um, uh, we were the problem class. We set the building on fire and staged a walkout. Based. Um... I think my mom said her graduating class was 1,600-ish. Yeah, I don't know how many graduated out of my class. Um, we had a fairly decent attrition rate. Um, and our school had a daycare. Our, our high school had a daycare. Like, it was a necessity. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, th- oh, fuck. I, I understood what it meant. That's it's a little sad. Yeah. Um, I, I've told the story before of, um, agent Trey is no longer in the house. Yeah. Funny how that works. Um, thanks MTV. Yeah. Right. Um, I've told the story before Lisa. Um, I wonder what she's up to these days. Um, she was the girl to want in our school. She was the head cheerleader. She was hot as fuck. She was the girl that the boys lusted after. Right. She was, she was the get, um, she saw Titanic when it came out something like 18 or 19 times. Like I remember just a few things about her cause we did not run in the same circles. Um, she didn't walk 
gra- like she didn't graduate like walk at graduation, right? She didn't walk because she was in labor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, that's dark. Uh, my school kicked the pregnant girls to night school to keep them out of sight. You know, we just had a daycare. We 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 had a fucking daycare that like they they put them into. Um, let me see if I can. You know what? Here's oh man, here's a. Let's see. What was that? Um, can we get a satellite? Of this area, yeah, we can. Um, all right, let me reorient myself. <sighs> so that would be A wing, that would be E. There we go. Um, here you go, folks. Here is the daycare in the high school I went to. This building. This building right here is the daycare. Doesn't seem like a, doesn't seem like a small facility either. <laughs> it's um yeah, it's a it's a decent sized school and um holy shit, man. Like, okay, so I have, I, I haven't looked at this town. In did a, they teach up students only or um, how did that work? No, no. Um, we had, we had sex ed. Um, I have not looked at this fucking town in a very long time. Um, that's still there. Holy shit. Sorry, y'all. You're just going to have to bear with me while I look at this off stream. Because I'm not going to fucking show you all of this detail. I'm going to dox the shit out of myself. Um, They still haven't expanded this at all. Wow. And that entire area is still fucking blank. Holy shit, man. This town hasn't really changed much at all. Um, I think we would like to remind all of our viewers that arson is bad, okay? <laughs> I mean, yeah, arson arson is usually a bad thing. Um, all right, so... Where is... There it is. And, yep, there's the house that I lived in in high school. Dude, this this fucking place is not, wow. Still exactly the same. <clears throat> um, That's fucking trippy as shit, man. Uh, I mean, I've been gone from there for... A minute, shall we say? <laughs> right? Like, um, okay, so minus. Okay, I've been gone from there for 18 years. The place is still exactly the fucking same. Right? Like, that's, dude, that's. Imagine not leaving a place like that. <clears throat> All right, like, you, you grow up somewhere. And you fucking, you spend, you spend a bunch of years there and it's just never changes, right? Like, what does that do to a human psyche? What does that do to your growth potential? Right? Like, I, I know people that never left there, right? Like, I, I know, like, there's a whole contingent of my graduating class that never left that fucking place. That place is exactly the fucking same, man. The only difference I could see looking at that map, there's a Dollar General there now. Mm. Like, that's it. Like, that's, that's, that's the difference. 
right? Like fucking a man. Like that's gotta be just the most soul deadening thing in the world. Like, look, I hate Vegas. I hate this fucking place, but you can't say Vegas is boring. You can't say Vegas doesn't change, right? Like this place is constantly reinventing itself. It's constantly installing some new psychotic attraction. It's constantly trying to attract new people here, right? Like it, it is, it is an ever shifting populace, uh, in Las Vegas, right? There will be a new person down the street from me next week, guaranteed, right? Like it, that's how this place works, but. To just never have it change. Oh my God, that's got to just kill you inside. Um, you look at the, um, the Google map that I show you from the, the place I grew up, like it's the same. Like 20 years ago, I left and uh, it hasn't changed since. Oh, that's the, those are the kind of places. They're great to grow up in, right? There's a stability to it. They're great to grow up in, but holy shit, man, do you need to leave? Right? Like, you can't stay there. <laughs> you can't stay there. Don't be those people. Like, that's, that's, that's the deal. Like, I, I think those places are great for childhood. Right? That, that kind of stability. Then get the fuck out. <laughs> Just get the fuck out. Because <laughs> you need to go somewhere, man. And it ain't there. It ain't there. Malls Vipa says, ah, oh, fuck, I think I need to move. Um, <laughs> you probably do then. Uh, Vegas is the same, just get a new paint job from time to time. I got to tell you, it really isn't. Uh, it really isn't. The, 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 like, there's a constant influx of, like, new people here. And that's what changes a place, right? Like, look, yeah, I understand the aesthetics change and that sort of thing. But look, there's constantly a new immigrant group to Vegas. Like this place is constantly expanding. It, it, it's absolutely staggering. Um, what do you want? Laotian, Thai, Vietnamese, Indian, Korean, like, right? K fucking, you want some like Canadian? Like we, we've, we've literally got every group represented here. It's kind of ridiculous, especially Southeast Asia, especially Southeast Asia. Right? Like, I can I can go to a fucking Cambodian market. Right? Like, how many of y'all got a Cambodian market in your town? Yeah, got me beat. Right? Like, that's, that's, like, for real. Like, I've got, I've got a specialty Japanese uh, market store down the street from me. Right? Not just, like, a Japanese, like, grocery store. We have those. But a literal Japanese specialty store where there's items they specially import from Japan that are hard to get, that are like niche products within the Japanese cultural diaspora, right? It, it is, it, it's, look, this place sucks, but it doesn't suck on that front, right? There's, there's, dude, I, I discovered Peruvian food here. Right. This is this is the place that introduced me to native Peruvian family that had a fucking restaurant here. Right. This is this is how I discovered Lomo Saltado and Pollo Saltado and these sorts of things. Right. And my my love for Cooey, even though it's taboo in the U.S. Cooey is guinea pig, by the way. Um, it, you know, this to the, the, the cultural breadth of uh, like you know the the representation of nationalities in Las Vegas is no small feat and it there it's usually only comp out competed by extraordinarily larger cities like New York right it, it's you usually have to have some place like New York to get this kind of representation but due to the like weird nature of Vegas it actually breeds it and so yeah like we, it's, it's, it's actually one of the only good things about this place is that sort of cultural representation that happens through the immigrant populaces that move here from all over the globe. Um, I had an Uber driver one time that was from Nigeria who had lived in Paris, London, New York, and now Vegas. Um, also, by the way, he stated unequivocally, Las Vegas driving is the worst in the world. <laughs> this is a man who drove in Africa, drove in Paris, drove in London, and drove in New York. And he said unequivocally, 
this is the craziest fucking place I've ever driven. It, it's bad. It's bad. Vegas driving is bad, y'all. Like, I'm not, I'm not fucking blowing smoke up your ass. This place is fucking psychotic to drive in. It, it, it's just imagine if you had, like, Chinese national tourists with Californians, with New Yorkers, with vacationers from, mid, uh, from the Midwest, with drunk frat boys, with I, I, impatient I, locals, and some European imports in sports cars stirred up. They all kind of bad. Yes, it's all of the bad of the world put into a fucking cookie uh, into a pressure cauldron and then stirred up. It is the worst driving. Yeah, it, it's I, I and yeah, I have external objective people on this one. This is not just a fucking angry local who's like, I fucking hate traffic like traffic lights. No, like legitimately, I've had an Uber driver that like Nigeria, Paris, London, New York, and then Vegas. And he's like, yeah, this is the worst place to drive in the world. <laughs> also he gave me a really good ref uh uh reference uh referral to a, a nigerian restaurant here in town <laughs> i was like dude you got it you know where you any nigerian food here in town he's like yep like rock the fuck on <laughs> right like that's dude there's very few places you can have that happen um no um they actually you know what um, I ate frog before says wilhelm i have eaten frog as well and i'm i'm presuming fratus had to have no, I haven't played actually. Really? Well, that's a stereotype busted like a motherfucker. Um, you know what? Um, they're actually there are some really good walking spaces here in town. I will I will tell you that. Um, let's see if I can find some here. Um, biking. There we go. All right. So here, Fertus, uh, not Fertus, I'm sorry, Wither, <laughs> Fertus, <laughs> fucking Fertus, he's just right on my mind. Uh, Wither, here, here is, here is like, um, you see all these, the, these green lines and shit? These are all biking paths. And they're like, you know, they go through fucking like neighborhoods and shit. Like here, like, look, this is, this is all like bike path and shit, right? Like it's, it's, they're all over the town. Um, credit where credit's due, as long as you're not like in, in, in here, all of the bike paths when you come in town are just fucking roads, right? If you're in the suburbs of Las Vegas, if you're, if you're out in like Hendo or Summerlin, Hendo is Henderson, by the way. Um, if you're out in Henderson or Summerlin or that sort of stuff, right? If you're in the suburbs of Las Vegas, we have a fair amount of walking and bike paths. Yeah. Like my neighborhood is right on a park. Um, and we have miles of paths around our neighborhood and that sort of thing. I credit where credit's due. They did a halfway decent job in that regard. Biking is sketchy as shit, um, in this, in this city, um, due to legality and drivers as stated before, worst driving in the world, right? You do not want to be riding your bike on the side of the road, which is what you have to do because you're not allowed to ride on the sidewalk because it's illegal. So you have to use the bike path that is on the side of the road and you have to interact with traffic. And as stated before, worst driving in the world. So you can imagine how many bikers are struck by cars in this town. It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, so, yeah. But if you're, again, if you're in Henderson, like if you're in the suburbs, then there's actually a lot of bike paths that connect without ever having to use the main road system. So, you know, and again, while it is, it is trespassing, um, you can, you can pull up the, uh, Henderson water department map system, um, which is it, like an 800 meg PDF. Um, and it maps all of the washes, culverts, and drainage systems of Las Vegas. Some of which are, are big enough to drive a full-size truck through. Um, and you can transit. You can basically ghost your way through this city. It's completely illegal. It's 100% trespassing, and I would never tell you to do it, and I would never uh, inform you to do such a thing. But you can do it. Um, and we have an approximate 1,000 people living in our, our, our sewer systems. They're, they're well, not our sewer systems. I, I say sewer. They're not sewers. They're, they're the flood control systems, right? We call them washes. 
right? Like it is it, like quite literally like these giant tunnels and these connecting drainages and these sorts of things. We got a thousand, an estimated thousand people living in them um, under the city of Las Vegas, like straight up like mole people, folks like, yeah, like tunnel folk. It's, it's a thing. Um, cupcake. What do those people do when there's actually floods? They die. Did you expect another answer? Uh, not all of them, but there's always one or two fatalities. Yeah. Uh, flash floods in the desert are a, a real fucking thing. Las Vegas doesn't get affected by them because our construction, our architecture is literally built. Um, the, the entire valley is on a slope. North town, like northwest of uh, the northwest valley, uh, portion of the valley is the high point, And the southeast point is the low point. So the entire valley is essentially on a slope. And so we know a predictable drainage pattern. And so we've basically built out what, what are desert washes, like main run waterways, but we've created artificial systems underneath the city. And so if it flash floods, if it rains in a portion of the valley, it will flash flood near instantly. But all of that gets diverted through the wash system. And so, like, it doesn't affect the residential areas. It doesn't affect, like, it just right under our feet, right? But there's a thousand fucking people living in those tunnels. And, yeah, um, they mostly prepare for it. They build, like, they build slats across the tunnel so that, like, most of the time the tunnels don't actually fill with water. They, it's, you know, a fucking a third of it sort of thing, right? And it goes under their stuff. Like, they construct for it. But inevitably, inexorably, at least once a year, a homeless person ends up fucking pulled out of it, drowned, because they were probably laying on the bottom of the tunnel, drunk or something, potentially, asleep, right? Just trying to catch a fucking fusees, and it flash flooded. It happens. <clears throat> um, I did coke for the first time with those people. Nice psycho. Um, I used to, um, I used to do urban exploration down there. That's how I know about it. I've used it in the past to disappear from time to time, right? Just, you go from point A and say you're being, look, I'm going to put out a hypothetical, all right? This is a completely <laughs> hypothetical situation. It did not occur in any way, shape, or form. Um, but let's just say you're out, like, tagging a wall with some, like, anti-capitalist, anti-statist propaganda. Again, you should never do this, and this isn't something I did personally. But let's just say you're out tagging a wall, and, you know, you've got your stencil up, and you're, you're spray painting and that sort of thing, and you're, you're, you're focused on your work. <clears throat> and a cop pulls up behind you, right? They didn't run the lights. They just slowly creep up on you. And all of a sudden, whoop, whoop, right? What are you going to do, right? Like, holy shit, man. Now, in this instance, maybe as you're tossing your stencil and your fucking your cans into your pack, right? And you, you're winging it over your, your shoulder. Maybe in this instance, the cop yells something stupid at you. Like, hey, don't worry about it. Come back here. Right? And you, of course, keep hoofing at it, right? Like, that's you're not fucking new. You're not dumb. Like, you're not going to fall for this. This is fucking doof. This is stupid. And again, a cop would never say something that stupid to uh, a tagger, especially in a town where the mayor advocated for cutting off a uh, tagger's thumbs, right? Like, for sure, you know that cops just one of the good ones and that you definitely won't end up with a felony on your record. Um, so you fucking throw that bag over your shoulder and you ditch out down the hill towards, uh, the nearest wash that you happen to know about. And you hop that fucking fence and you drop down that ladder really quickly into that wash, which is essentially a cement basin. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a giant square without a top on it, right? And you just immediately hang a left into a junction of tunnels, and you go up those tunnels, and those tunnels lead through into a residential neighborhood. They lead under a Target parking lot. They lead over near, like, I don't know, a, a, a home improvement center. And you could disappear in any multiple directions. And maybe one of those directions leads into a residential neighborhood that you potentially live in. And so you can just foom, 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 and you're at your house if you know what you're doing. Now, what's in, doesn't that sound like a useful system to understand and know? And again, I would never advocate to use it because that would be <laughs> trespassing. That would be completely illegal, and you should not do illegal things, boys and girls, and NB pals, right? 
like that's that's something you would you should not do. Um, but I'm just saying, like you know, hypothetically speaking, seems like an interesting thing to know about. <clears throat> have to say you do spin an interesting tale right right it's a, it's an interesting story um one time i fit i when i was six i fell into a sewer hole and i traveled in the tunnel and found a dead muskrat dog shit 10 feet away from it skeptic little urban exploration when you were six good on you <clears throat> i ditched school and started exploring one day that's how i found out about him psycho yes um does it does it make the same noise as mario when you pop out of the tunnel it does um, <laughs> malls. I hear you. It's not a good idea. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Kai covering his ass a lot. Unusual for a bottom. Uh, uh, you know what? You deserve it. There you go. For a little rim shot. Um, I had a question about the thousand people in the tunnels. This is basically anarchist colony. It's, it's not even anarchist. Um, zippy. It, it is, it is, from what I, my interactions, there is a very little formalized structure. Um, it is sort of the it, it's it's a, almost a quintessential individualist society. Um, they they're mostly looking out for themselves. There there is some coordination and cooperation where they overlap, but by and large, no, they cannot be described as anarchistic for by any uh, by any means. Um, here, let me, let me show you guys so you can you know, sort of like, let me find, um, let's see. Um, I need a, I need a satellite view. There we go. Yeah. All right. So this is kind of difficult to see in satellite. Um, let me see if I can't. Yeah, this will do. All right, so this is kind of difficult to read. I know satellite imagery, right? Um, but see all of this, this, this concrete pathing that disappears into this weird shaded area. And then there's this concrete pathing here with some water here that disappears into this, right? This is, is a freeway. And you notice that if we cross this side, this is a gully, right? This is a wash. This is a natural wash. This is where water would collect and it would flow through, right? These sorts of things spread all over the city of Las Vegas. But you notice something here. Let's come over to this one. Here's an interesting one. You notice how this goes in here? Notice it doesn't come out this side? That means it runs under this commercial area. But you have to have access ports to it. You've got to have drainage methods. You've got to have maintenance methods. So there's manholes. There's side entrances. There's ways to get into it and out of it. But it's under the commercial plaza. All right. These things are spread out all over Las Vegas. You can literally run from one end of Vegas to the other utilizing this system. It's completely interconnected. And so, yeah, this is this is what I'm talking about. It's, it's again, 100 percent trespassing. You should never use this stuff. This is for official use only. Um, but it is a thing that exists. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's that's what a wash is. It's, it's the, what I showed you, like that's the traditional desert wash. It's an area where water would naturally flow, but we just do, we pull like a Los Angeles river thing where we concrete it up and we create a formalized flow pattern to it. Whether it is a fast travel system, it is legitimately a fast travel system. Yeah. Uh, the high desert of Cali has some similar tunnels. I used to play in them. Yep. Any place in the desert has washes and any place that has built up architecture and society and civilization in those places are going to formalize their wash structure because you can't just have the wash diverting one day because of fucking flow patterns, right? No, <laughs> concrete that shit in and make sure it stays going that way because you're building houses on either side of it, you know, that sort of thing, right? And so, yeah, that's, that's just the entire Las Vegas Valley is 
dotted in those. And yeah, where you end up here, let me um let me get where the sort of like main ones are. Let me try and find you a um an example. Um, where's Sahara? There's Sahara. All right, so you can't see it, right? You can't you can't see it here, right? But there is a giant fucking wash here. They've used the the interstate system to eminent domain, basically, right? We already control this land. We can build wash systems in it, but they're completely tunneled, right? Like. There are massive fucking tunnels all through here. What's a country? What? What is a country? The U.S. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a Sahara, if I thought. Uh, Sahara is, because we have the Sahara Casino. Yeah, no, I, I pieced that together. Yes. I, yeah. yeah, it's Sahara. Um, it's, it's a road. Um, there's massive fucking tunnels down there. Um, and let's see. There you go. You guys want to see some examples of it? All right. Here's 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 like the tunnel people of Las Vegas sort of series, right? Like there's there's a series of these fucking photos, um, and I'll get a few of them, right? Like, all right. So let's let's just we'll do some of this shit, all right? You can just disappear into these things, right? Like that's that's just sort of the and there's just people that just live down there. Like there is, like here you mean say this they've got how many bikes here? One, two, three, four bikes at least that I'm seeing, right? Like you can you just ride your fucking bikes through these things. And here's here's one of the connectors, right? Like there's this this thing is 15, 20 feet high. This is the kind of shit that joins like the Sahara <coughs> the Sahara runs and stuff together. Here's here's another example, right? Like here's this is a typical wash. This is a typical run, right? These are prefabricated join sections. Most of the underground tunnels in Las Vegas look exactly like this. No, it stays extraordinarily temperature stable cupcake. This is where you want to be in, in the dead of summer in Vegas. It's nice and cool down there. These are usually a few feet below um, beflo, uh, before uh, under ground level, right? When they go under a residential or a commercial district, they're usually many feet of uh, dirt above this tunnel structure. These are prefabricated concrete sections. They dig out a fucking trench. They lay them in. They join them up, and then they re, uh, they re, they backfill the dirt. Right, Aka, you don't. Um, and I have, uh, and there's some there. And here's the other thing. There's some amazing art down there. Um, it does. It, it's temperature stable, cupcake. It's temperature stable. Like in the dead of winter, it's a it, winter Vegas winter. Um, it is it is many degrees warmer than it is outside. In the summer, it is many degrees cooler than it is outside. Um, yeah, like Cooper Pedy. Yes, Australia's opal mine, uh, opal mining town. Um, there are some amazing artists that work down here. Here is one of the like. Here's one of the entrances. This is pretty common. This is like there's three or four entrances to these tunnels. They branch off into this sort of thing. This is why in my hypothetical scenario, this is the sort of thing you would ditch into. Um, this, there's a two, but honestly, I think there's probably a third one off to the right. Um, and so these, these go in different directions. The one in the middle usually goes straight, and then the two on either side usually branch off to the other left and right branching paths. Um, and so, yeah, you have all sorts of underground activities that can go on there. Here's an example of somebody boarding up, uh, boarding it up. You were asking about whether people can roll up on you or not. Here's an example of something that like when it flash floods, this is a problem. This will just get <laughs> washed away. 
Um, so do people ever do, uh, do the police ever do raids and round people up since it's illegal for them to be there? The police don't fuck around with the washes. <clears throat> the police don't, they don't, they don't fuck with the washes. They ain't going down there. Um, if you talk to the cops, generally speaking, th- they'll, they will say things like, we don't get paid enough to go down there. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's like that. Right? Like it, there, there are entire encampments down there. Um, there are, um, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the, uh, one of the dudes I encountered down there one time had a dog, um, straight up, like he had a dog with him. Um, there are, you know, entire little like encampments. Some people spend hey, here, here we go. Here you go. Here's an example of like a, the, like a Sahara tunnel run. Right. Um, this is, the, this is the kind of, this is what you're looking at. Like they, they bore the entire fucking thing out. They run this tunnel and this is, this is sort of what you're dealing with in some of the main tunnel runs. And then there's the sort of the sections that are built up behind this, uh, behind, uh, under places, which are these prefabricated, uh, prefabricated ones. And you can see here on the uh, top right, this is graded, but trust me, you can, uh, <clears throat> if you do some advanced work, um, you can get through here, right? Like this is, this is going to be like right here is probably like in a commercial area. It's probably in like a Walmart parking lot or something like that. And you can just flip into it. Um, and so, yeah, here's, here's, here's what they look like on the outside. Right. This is this is this is the thing. You you just go in and you see it just disappears into darkness. Oh, here's a good shot. This is a really good shot, actually. Right? Like this is this is this is that is Las Vegas Boulevard right there on the top left. You are looking right down the strip, which is Las Vegas Boulevard, and Trump on the right, Monte Carlo on the left, Hollywood. So we're looking north to south. Um, yeah, we're lo- we're looking north to south in this photo, and that would put us um, somewhere. We're on the other side of the Monte Carlo, so that would put us. Let's see. Yeah, no. <laughs> the the one near me. Um, so they took that one. They took that over a few years ago. So this would be. I wish I could spin this map. Um, so it would be somewhere around here, I think. Probably looking in. Um. It is Aka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your Aka's spot on. Yeah, yeah. It's it's over. It, we're MGM ish. Um, and so, yeah, you're just looking down in it and this just goes, you notice the directionality on this, right? Like this is, if you're looking at this, this is going down. This is going under the strip, right? Like these, these things are fucking intense when you get midtown. And this is the sort of thing. These are the people you encounter. Um, like I said, I've 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 never had I, I've I've never been down there, of course. But if I had been down there in a previous life, which of course I did not do, um, I would be I would have been engaging in an activity that is called urban exploration, and you would run into all sorts of people. Um, and I can state at least hypothetically that uh, I couldn't perceive ever having a problem. Honestly, they are just people like you and me. Despite any amount of drug issues or antisocial things, um, Mm. they're just people at the end of the day. And so many photographers, many reporters, many people have been down there and nobody's gotten fucking stabbed Nobody's gotten kidnapped. Nobody's disappeared and not come back up. Um, yeah. 
it, it's it's just a lot of people who are hard on their luck and or want to disappear from society for a variety of reasons. That's it. Um, how many kids live down there? We don't know. Like I said, it's only a thousand, a thousand. We, we only have an estimate of a thousand. We don't know, actually. We have no idea. We have, there's no way we can do a census of it. We don't know. There, there is, we have an indeterminate amount of people in those tunnels. The estimate is a thousand, but it could be more. It could be less significantly in either direction. We don't know. There could be as many kids or as little kids as we know down there. Uh, there's, it's, it's very difficult to get, get a number and a read on that. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's the Las Vegas tunnel system, y'all. Um, blast from the past. Again, it's, it's, you know, I'm pretty sure seven, seven years. Uh, I think I'm right near it. Um, trying to think um i was how old are, are those tunnels some of them are decades some of them are relatively new uh zippy that i mean that's a lot of books it's a lot of stories what book was that in that the workers all lived underground until they rose up <laughs> it's a lot of shit actually <laughs> Um, in movies, first thing that pops into my head is Demolition Man. Uh, probably hundreds of children. Yeah, who knows? Um, do you think there are a thousand empty homes in Vegas area? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you're wondering, could we house all of the people? Um, it's at least one anime. Uh, if you're wondering if we could house all of the people that are down there in, like, proper housing? Yeah, no, we could do that. Yeah, you probably should ask uh, Neil Breen. Um, cool. Confirm. Uh, ex expand. Let me find, um, I can, I can type, I swear. Um, <laughs> Zippy, we have 40,481 vacant single ham family homes according to uh, the data sets for the Valley. And this is according to the Review Journal, one of our newspapers. 40,000. Uh, that number could have changed since this this happened, but I can t let's see. Um, uh, let me get let me try and get twenty twenty. Um, I don't have 2020 statistics available. Um, either way. Um, all right. Las Vegas real estate market statistics that I'll use. There's a minimum of 10,000 empty right now. Just based off of like real estate listings alone. Real estate listings alone dictate that there's there's likely a ten thousand plus in vacant homes in the valley. So, yeah, we we've got enough to house them, probably ten times over, at least. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Trump did fuck up the census. The census is always fucky to start with, but Trump fucked it up even further. Um. 
I bet there are more people down there since the pandemic. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Fuck this neoliberal capitalist hellscape. Yeah. Um, I remember reading somewhere that I think for every homeless person in the U.S., there's like 30-something empty homes. Yeah, sounds about right. That sounds about right. Um, I think my calculation was at 14 or 16 in average. Yeah, either way. It's enough. Yeah. It's enough for every single person. Well, I, I wasn't saying like. Yo, I know. Like there, there are different ways to, to to arrive at the either number, but it, it's still many times over. Uh yes, yes. Um. Oh, and by the way, we're saying that about, about the U.S., but uh, the situation is France. In France, is the same. Just like a little less grotesque, but still, there are many vacant homes here for every one uh, homeless person. Okay. Um, and uh, no, I didn't hear that, Nixa, but I just checked, and apparently it's a thing. Uh, Zuckerberg is potentially, like, is reportedly uh, going to announce a name change for Facebook. Mm, okay. Well, it's standard corporate bullshit, right? The name, dude, Facebook is associated with, like, the, the, band, the brand is burned, right? Time to burn the brand, right? Like, to fucking, too many people associate negative connotations to the name Facebook. Well, rename it. Right? Companies do that all the time. They rebrand. It's time to rebrand. So. Okay, they'll get it back. It would be Facebook Classic. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, Blackwater these days is something like Z. It's a subsidiary of somebody. It's academi 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 I don't know what the fucking Latin pronunciation would the, on this would be, but it, academi um, there, that's, that's who Blackwater is. They, they were Blackwater, then they were Z and then they were, uh, now they are like Academi, which is a subsidiary of, um, uh, no, I'm sorry. Academi merged with Triple Canopy, who is a subsidiary of Constellus Group. Yes. Um, Oh, uh, Nixa said hello, Lord for Juice. Hello, Mr. Nixa. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Um, they're still around. Um, and the fucking do the it, it we fall in this like so, this no evil foods drama. This is fucking hilarious. So there's this company. Uh, there's this company called No Evil Foods, and they <sighs> they adopted a socialist aesthetic. Right. Like they, they were all about the like the workers rights and shit like that. Right. We're going to we're going to empower the worker and we're going to empower the supply chain. And it's all about. Right. They adopted this entire like socialist aesthetic. Well, the founders are. Um, <laughs> OK, so they got called out hardcore. They got whole, called out hardcore. Oh, wait for a cupcake. So sure. they were in, they did an interview on the 13th on a, sh uh, on a podcast called plant based business hour. The, the founder, one of the founders of no evil foods goes on this fucking tirade, right? You've got social media, which is, you know, a cancel culture. It's full of lies. It's full of health truths. It's full of distortions. Um, very convenient narratives that fit, fit the poster's agenda. Sadra Shadal, co-founder said, we've got, we've seen a lot of that going around. We've also seen more reputable newscasts, some radio broadcasts, radio programs that left us less than 24 hours to provide a statement. At that point, the news segment is already full, full produced and their mind is already made up they have no intention of including our story and allowing us to share our voice in it why that happens i don't really know it was very very disappointing to see news outlets that we trusted as sources of real information to respond to us in that way or to not respond to not give us you know that barely that, uh, that barely did they barely did their due diligence there was zero fact checking insinuations that you know just crazy Mike Wolianski, co-founder of uh, the No Evil Food CEO, uh, added, there's a lot out there, particularly in digital, that's biased or agenda-driven. That's unfortunate, but it's not objective reporting. Here's the fun stuff. 
right? The the company that was all founded on socialist aesthetics and how about we're empower, empowering the worker and the supply chain and the labor force. Um, they started hand uh, they started holding mandatory anti union propaganda sessions to dissuade their <laughs> their workers from unionizing. They required ninety days of perfect attendance to qualify for temporary pandemic hazard pay, and then fired workers who organized a petition to change this policy. They waged an aggressive censorship campaign to hide their misconduct. Then they paid thousands in labor board uh, labor board settlement money to workers who were illegally tar uh, targeted. They fired their entire production team in June 2021 without warning or severance pay, cutting their health insurance, refusing to pay accrued time uh, time off, and so the company could outsource their jobs to a third party with ties to the meat industry in order to cut costs. <laughs> It's funny because they're producing vegan food. Yes. Cancel culture, yo. Cancel culture. <laughs> laughing my ass off at that shit. I was like, yes. Yes. Seethe. Seethe harder. I love it. I, I, I drink in your fucking malding. How dare they call us on our shit. Oh. Yeah. Something, something, capitalism, co-opting, socialist aesthetics. Huh. I've never seen that before in my life, Cupcake. I don't know what you're talking about. Um. Oh, um, that fucking Josh Duggar asshole is going down like a motherfucker, apparently. The, uh, the, the judge refused to suppress the video evidence. Um, like, I don't know, like, I don't even know if you know who the Duggars are for twos. You guys are probably fairly well insulated from this shit. What are we talking about? Okay, so there was this TV show with like fucking, I don't know, like 19 kids and counting or some shit like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, um, Beyond the Bastard did a piece on them. Okay, yes. Josh Duggar is a fucking kid, kid toucher. He's a diddler. He's a fucking kid fucker. Right. Like he's, he's one of the like children, right. He's one of the older brothers or some shit like that. Right. Huge fucking family. And fucking like, yeah, he, he, he's, a, he's a diddler and the family like tried to cover it up and the fucking, you know, TV program tried to downplay and all those sorts of things. And he finally got tagged for fucking child porn. Of course, that's what they all go down for. Not the actual diddling. Usually it's usually the kitty porn because you can get hard evidence of that. You're like, here's his fucking laptop. It's filled with videos of diddling. Right. Um, he, um, the, they, the, the defense in the case was trying to suppress the video evidence. <laughs> it's like, motherfucker, there's video evidence of this shit. Like, oh, well that's unfair. It would bias the jury against our, def uh, against the defendant. Yeah, that's kind of the idea. I, so yeah, the, the, um, the fucking judge ruled just just recently like yesterday that like no i'm not suppressing the video evidence <laughs> it's going to trial this way um yeah quiverful christians they're fucking they're they're a bunch um fucking yeah but ah oh, genius fucking genius it's Um, oh, we have another one. Oh, who is Megan Dillon? Megan Dillon. Who the fuck are you, Megan? Um, let's see. Evie Magazine. Evie fucking magazine. Okay. Just trying to figure out. Um, so like we watched that clip of Tim pool last night and I was trying to figure out, I'm like, I, I was asking Chad, I'm like, is this motherfucker just a grifter? Because I've seen like nothing of Tim pool. I have no idea, but he literally has this dude across the table from him. One of his cohorts. Right. And the guy, the guy literally says like he, he brings up squid game. No, I have still haven't watched it. People. Um, he brings up fucking squid game and he, this guy's like, yeah, the, the creator says it's about capitalism and Tim pool looks at, like unironically goes, yeah, but really I think it's about communism. Okay. The creator literally came out and said, I wanted to write a critique of capitalism and your first take is, yeah, but it's a co about communism. I'm like, is this motherfucker just dumb 
or like is he fucking a grifter? Like what's his deal? And Chad assured me they're like, oh no, he's full on grifter. I'm like, oh. he's very, very, very dumb. Very dumb. Uh, I'm like, all right, well, you know, that makes sense, right? Like if he's if you know, if he's if if he's running the right wing grift, I get it, I get it, I get it. Right? Fucking this Megan Dillon writing a culture piece for EV magazine. The director of Squid Game says it's about capitalism, but it's really more like communism. What 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 does it take? What does it take? Like legitimately, what does it take for these fuckers not to do this? Like, how much of a grifter hack do you have to be to run this kind of article? Right? Like, it. it, it this is a hat. This is a black hat. This is a black fitted hat. Yeah, I know you say it's a black fitted hat, but it really looks like a turban to me. What 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 does it take? What does it take? Because quite frankly, this motherfucker like has like literally stated unequivocally, I wanted to write a critique of modern capitalism and the, its effect on the world. Right? Like I wanted to do this. This is this is my interpretation of what capitalism looks like, how it operates, how it interacts with the world. It is about capitalism, capitalism, capitalism. Yeah, but it's really more about communism, isn't it? Either you have to be epic levels of dumb or you just have to be a grifter hack right like that's the only two options it's, this is a binary choice in my mind right like you got it megan dylan has to be dumb as fucking rocks or she's a grifter hack that's that's the only those are the only two options that if you like you know the director of squid game says it's about capitalism but it's really more like communism I think it has to do with um, being willfully ignorant and deeply indoctrinated. So it's a point of the grift where you are not aware that you are actually grifting. You're just doing what everyone else is doing. Uh, I find it ironic that a hyper neoliberal capitalist state made an anti capitalist TV show. No skeptic. Co opting, co opting, co opting. Dude. Uh, have you seen Bo Burnham's special inside? I have not. Like, but. Like, seizing critics of capitalism, like, he, he like, plays all the, the greatest hits. I, yeah, like, um, dude, skeptic, I thought you said you read this. It's not, it's not, it's not ironic. It's literally a part of the program. <laughs> It's literally a part of the program. That's that's straight up. Like this is this is a part of neoliberal capitalism. It's that, recuperation. Yeah, like this is dude. This is yeah yeah yeah. Even even your your dissent will be capitalized upon. The the very antithesis will be synthesized. Kantian Kantian uh, Kantian version of Hegelian dialecticalism. Right. This is even yes yes. We are the thesis. You are the antithesis. Well, we will synthesize it into profit. This is straight up. This is what neoliberal capitalism does. It does it on the regular. Fucking Che Guevara t-shirts. Mm. There you go. Um, best comment under Dim Fool's video I saw was, thank you, Tim, for providing context to that show. I thank God for people like you that helped me understand this world. I'm almost certain it was satirical. Almost. <laughs> Critical? It wasn't. I, I like I, that's the sort of comment that I I would see and I'd be like, nah, that's probably real. Like I I know sarcasm doesn't carry over the internet and I know fucking you know blah 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 rule and blah blah blah. No, that's the sort of shit that I just assume at this point that yeah that motherfucker is dumb as sticks and he fucking turns to Tim Pool for his interpretation of the world. Ah uh, yeah, Zippy Carlin was right. Um. Um, what? Oh uh, yeah. Rev. I, I'm short circuiting with. Uh, have you ever seen the the channel of Spirit Science? Oh yeah! Fucking let's do some sacred geometry up in this bitch. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And I, um, like they do the same thing as Team Pool does, which is to say, reference pop culture as if it was you know examples of actual things which is really distressing 
yeah, we're good from fucking, you know what? Fucking, I mean, that just a good time. Let's, let's, hold on. Um, I don't. Yeah, you, you did this. You did this. Fertus did this. Um, here we go. We're, we're, um, let's do, you know what? Yeah, let's do that. Hold on. Don't believe or disbelieve anything we discuss in Spirit Science. Yeah. Simply have your own experience. <laughs> have your own experience. Right. Remember the cuckoo nut does this shit too? Right? Like this is this is the kind of shit they do. I love this fucking stuff. Remember, don't believe anything we say or disbelieve anything we say. Have your own experience. It'd be pretty long. Back in the late 1700s, early 1800s time period, there was a social movement liberating the modern world from the reign of control that religion and superstition had on the people. Essentially, after our darkest part on the procession of the equinox, we really began yeah. to wake up. Started making new inventions that were rapidly changing the world. The industrial era was beginning. Because of this, we began to see that maybe religion Where as an answer is the, was not there it is. All right. And so the movement happened. We turned to science instead to answer our questions about the universe. Yeah. Hunting has not gotten us anywhere. It's time we begin to question the decisions of our ancestors because many of the things that we've been led to I love this to shit. True, yeah, Rev, not. I'm fucking on board with this shit. This shit is new stuff that's fucking out fuel nowadays. for me. We should at least put it on the table and be able to discuss it as a global community. The truth about consciousness. One other thing before we get this rolling. I want to give an overview about what sacred geometry really is. Sacred geometry is the geometry of consciousness. It revolves around the idea that all consciousness, including human, is solely based on sacred geometry. Because it is, we can begin to see and understand where we have come from, where we are now, and where we're going. Uh, I, <laughs> Aka, Aka, I couldn't, I couldn't put, I couldn't put them through another one of these for Bad Movie Night. It's, it's, this is shit is rough. Science and rest. We would. All right, we call here. it the Big Bang. This is the theory that says everything in the universe was compressed to the point of a single, infinitesimally small particle. Something we would perceive as unity, and then rapidly exploded and expanded outwards and created everything in the universe. In religion, it is generally called creation. When God, or some all-knowing and all-seeing entity, being the only one imbued with such power, created everything, presumably in six days, before taking a well-deserved day off. Let's take a step outside the box for a second, and put these two sides of this cosmic coin into a Vesca Pisces. As usual, Everybody remember the Vesica Pisces. This is super important to them. This is like, okay, so if I had to explain like the spirit science crew, like Cuckoo and shit, the Vesica Pisces is to them what the Hegelian dialectic is to MLs. Right? Like this is this is a core tool that they use. And they they go back to it time and again. For those of you who don't know what the Vesica Pisces is, is that shit right in the middle. Right? It's it's the overlap between two things. Right? It's, it's, it's the synthesis. It's, if you want to frame this in ML Hegelian terms, creation, Big Bang, thesis, antithesis, the Vesica Pisces is the synthesis that lies in the middle. The two enemies that never got along actually have quite a lot in common. Both say that the universe started with unity and expanded outwards. Both say that light was an important factor in creation as well. If at the beginning of the universe we were one essence and somehow became everything, then both are saying the same thing, that we came from the same source. But wait a second, how can we make sense out of that statement, the universe is infinite, if we are measuring it from a sense of having a beginning? And this is what we're going to talk about now. If we value the pursuit of knowledge, we must be free to follow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yes. flows here is male and female energy. Male energy is focused and female energy is creative and random. <laughs> Neither of them is greater nor weaker than the other, and both can be extremely powerful when fully manifested. Oh. Female energy is the land of unbridled possibilities created. Okay. Critical. No, it's 100% serious. It's 100% serious. It's 100% serious. These motherfuckers believe this shit. They are a cult. All right? They believe this shit. Also, by the way, Vesca Pisces actually translates out to the bladder of the fish. Right. So there's like tie ins to like Christianity and the fish and all of these sorts of things. Right. Like they will weave this narrative into everything. Nothing can escape the tentacles of this like of this belief system. It is absolutely ridiculous. No, they truly do believe this shit. Um, and like, yeah. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. I want to, I'm trying to get to one point. I want him to explain creation. Right. Like it, it, you have to, you have to see this shit to believe it. 
there is one portion of this video, because I've seen this, I've seen this, this is fucking hilarious. For people like Absurd Buddhist, Revroth, and myself, this stuff is our idea of a good time. We, we despise this shit. We despise this shit. But we revel in, like, watching it. We revel in talking about it. This is hilarious to us, right? Like, this, this is our, like, peak bad movie for us. Like, it is just ridiculous. Maybe because we have a lot of experience with these people and in these worlds, right? Like this is this is the thing is this is sort of like um, for like I, for Irish Swede and public loser and like people who have come from the like hardcore Christian community, Mormons, evangelicals and that sort of thing. Like they revel in the sort of like taking down of that sort of thing. This for us, we we come from this to a certain extent. Um, so, yeah, there's one portion of this video that I really kind of want you guys to see. It's fucking ridiculous of potential and affecting the universe from within. Focused male energy takes direct roads from point A to point B. This energy can be as strong as a tank, accomplishing tasks and going where it needs to go with precision and without distraction. The important thing to know about this energy is in how they move. I'm going to use some super basic sacred geometry to demonstrate this. This is the Fibonacci spiral. We're gonna be talking a lot more about it when we dive into the topic. For now, all you have to know is that it starts at one and flows outward forever in a very specific way and is present uh, in found it. everywhere. Skipping ahead. Been found in England, Tibet, Japan. Okay. Japan, this is this is great. To... All right. I ask that you do not choose immediately to shut this out and just watch with an open mind and try and see this in a new way. They do this a lot. Also, I want to tell you that by learning about sacred geometry simply by observing, you are absorbing only a very minuscule amount of information. The seed of life, the flower of life. Oh yes, this is this is. Mm. Oh, this is brilliant. If you really want to learn more, you must begin to draw it yourself. I kid you not, when you do this, you begin to see things in a new way. You begin to understand why things are done in the way that they are done. Promise. The flower of life was known around the world in ancient times. It was found in Ireland, Turkey, Israel, Egypt, China, Greece, Germany, India, and Iceland. It's also been recorded to have been found in England, Tibet, Japan, Sweden, Lapland, the Yucatan, and I think 14 other places. This thing is everywhere. Not only that, but everywhere around the world it has the same name, the flower of life. Now, to understand the flower of life, first we have to talk about how it's formed. This could get incredibly complex, so I'll try and keep it simple. Imagine consciousness, okay. or spirit, floating in a void, which means it's nothingness, and then spirit. No physical body or mind, just spirit, and that's it. Then blackness, essentially nothing, all around the spirit, for infinite. Spirit decides to do something, so it expands its consciousness all around itself as far as it can go without moving. It creates a sphere around itself. This is the first circle in the flower of life. Then, spirit has an awareness of what's around itself in 360 degrees. It moves to the very edge of the sphere anywhere and repeats what it did the first time. It creates this image, which also creates the Vesica Pisces. Within the Vesica Pisces is a vast and incredible it. amount of knowledge about width, proportion, depth. Also comes the square roots of 2, 3, and 5, which are all numbers that go on forever. But even more interestingly, comes geometric information about light. We'll talk about that in a moment. Now, spirit has no choice but to do it again. Spirit is flawless, and therefore it will move flawlessly, creating the next circle either here or here, exactly one radius away from the other circle next to it. Every time spirit moves another sphere, more and more knowledge comes out of the image that is created. The first complete image to be formed is this. It has two names, the seed, the seed of, life, of life or the Genesis pattern, and for good reason. Now, let's look at the book of Genesis for a second. Each of these <laughs> movements or creations of circles can be seen as another day. On the first movement, the second sphere, it created knowledge about not only mathematical proportions, but light. The first sentence of Genesis says, the earth was without form and void. You better fucking believe it, it is, Estrella. <laughs> and that the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. In the very next sentence, God says, let there be light. The key here is in the order. The movement happened first, then light happened immediately after. Well, but what about the waters? Well, you have to remember, the Bible has been changed over time a lot. The ancient Egyptians would say that the way our modern Bibles begin creation is impossible, especially if you think about it from a physics point of view. Imagine a dark, infinite space that no, goes on but... forever and ever in all directions. You're just floating there with nothing. You can't really fall, but where would you fall to? From a purely physics or mathematical point of view, motion itself, or kinetic energy, is absolutely impossible in a void. You can't even rotate, because motion cannot become real unless there is one other object in the space around you. So the ancient Egyptians would say that before God moved upon the face of the waters, it would first have to create something to move relative to. So, Genesis pattern, after three spheres, you get the Holy Trinity, 
Another interesting one, it says in many Bibles of the world, not just the Christian Bible, that on the fourth day of Genesis, exactly one half of creation was completed. Starting from the first motion, exactly one half of the circles were formed on the fourth day. Fifth day of Genesis, sixth circle, more information. And then on the sixth day, a geometric miracle takes place. The last circle forms a complete six petaled flower. This is what many earlier Bibles meant when they said, in the beginning, there were six. Our Bible even said creation was formed in six days, and this fits exactly. This is the pattern of Genesis, and so it's called the Genesis pattern. It's also the beginning of the creation of the universe that we live in. These original movements of spirit are really important, but now let's look at something even cooler. Another image that comes out of this pattern is this. It's called the Tree of Life. Many may recognize this as the Jewish or Hebrew Kabbalah, but the Kabbalah did not originate this image, and there is proof. The Tree of Life does not belong to any culture, not even the Egyptians who carved the Tree of Life on two sets of three pillars at Karnak Temple, Luxor, over 5,000 years ago. It's outside any race or religion, as with all of these images. There are patterns that are intimately connected with nature. You'll also notice that every circle on the Tree of Life is either the length or width of the Vesca Pisces. The second image beyond Genesis in the Flower of Life is the Egg of Life. This is formed during the second vortex motion. Upon its completion, it creates an image like this, a three-dimensional shape that you can hold in your hand. If you were to connect their centers, you would see a cube. So what? Who cares? Well, the ancient Egyptians did, because they were concerned with creation, life, and death. They called this cluster of spheres the egg of life. You probably won't believe me just yet, but this shape is the morphogenic structure that created your body. Your entire physical existence is dependent on the egg of life structure, and everything about you was created from that form. Everything from your eye color to how long your fingers are, this is a whole lesson on its own, so let's move on for now. All around <coughs> the, world, the flower of life. Okay. All right. Like this is this is this is what this is what Kukunet gets into, by the way. This is the kind of shit. If you start talking to these people and you get like really into it and you start exploring it with them, what you find out is you start getting to this territory. It, it oh, it gets so much deeper. It gets so much deeper, and it's amazing. Um, but yes, basically, it is a uh, a belief that the uh, the essence of God is mathematical and geometric, and thus the essence of your consciousness, the essence of thought itself, the essence of creation can all be understood see, through these series of geometric shapes and patterns, hence sacred geometry. The way you think, the way creation is created, the very fabric of the universe is derived from these shapes, movements, and patterns. And I told you they'd be revisiting the Vesica Pisces quite a few times. The Vesica Pisces is very important to these people. Um, like I said, I think the fair comparison, since most of you are like policy wonks and theory heads and you operate in political scenes and you don't <coughs> deal with these kinds of people, the, when the, the, uh, when the MLs bang on about Hegelian dialectics and shit like that, this, this is the Hegelian dialectics of the like woo woo cult world. Um, is this what happens when you permafry? Surprisingly enough, most of these people aren't permafried. Right, like this. This is not that crew. Um, there's a fair amount of them amongst them. Trust me, you fall into this through various cracks. Um, this, this actually, you can end up with in this. Um, you can end up in this camp a few different ways. Um, the there's a way to get there through like black Israelites and black nationalism. There's a way to get there from like Masonic and Illuminati conspiracy and imagery. There's a way to get there through the hippie um, sort of new age crew. There's a way to get there from the sort of um, tech side as well. Um, the the org uh, the organic vegans can fall into this crew pretty uh, pretty simply as well. Um, they, they, there's a few, um, pipelines from the sort of like organic vegan territory into the spirit science, sacred geometry, hidden, uh, hidden, hidden mystery religions of Egypt, um, territory, which is what this all is, by the way, it's all the mystery religions of Egypt. Um, you can, you can basically find that as the root of most of these things, um, the uh, Masonic Illuminati conspiracy stuff, mystery religions of Egypt, the, you know, uh, sort of a lot of the deep state cult, eyes wide shut Kubrick stuff, mystery religions of Egypt, Aleister Crowley, mystery religions of Egypt. 
this is you find your you find your your origin point for a, a shared origin point for a lot of this um yeah oh yeah all the crystal new age folks fall into this really quickly critical um yeah laws of attraction all that shit is this is all the same crew so yes um Interesting. I didn't know that, Zippy, but it's good to know. Um, yeah. Uh, I strive to become the anarchist version of crazy, if, if spirit science. Hey, you know. Um, it's the shit I used to get high and watch and just be like, fuck, even high, I still don't believe this shit. Um, Buddhist. It, it, it's actually really fun to to ponder and meditate on some of these shapes because these shapes are actually intrinsic and they have a lot of math and science behind them. Like, right, you, he's, he's not lying to you when he says that, like, you know, you can derive these, these mathematic constants and these concepts from these shapes. And cultures that are obsessed with geometry and architecture and mathematics have a tendency to focus on these shapes there's actually a lot to be learned from them but not the degree to which they're taking it right you're not going to understand the thought process of god by contemplating the seed of life all right that's not you're it's not a thing that's going to happen you're not going to unlock the mystical powers of your 11th dimensional chakra if you fucking contemplate the flower of life, right? If you meditate on the, the Kabbalah, the, sh the tree of life shape, you won't be unlocking the heart chakra to empower you to uh, astral project into a CIA facility, right? That's not, it's not, but this is the kind of shit they get up to and this is the kind of shit they talk about, right? Like that's, you know, yeah. Yeah, they're taking it several flights of stairs too far. Like, yeah, for sure. Um, like, it, it's, it's fucking wacky as shit, man, when you start getting in with these people. And, yeah, Rev, Buddhist, and I have all sort of, like, done our studies on this stuff. And some of, some of us, grew, Rev grew up with it, like, straight up. This is Rev's hippy-dippy fucking upbringing. And I got there through um, through the conspiracy run-ins with my cr like my IRL crew f late twenty tens basically we were, well mid two thousands to like mid twenty tens like we were we were doing the speed run uh, of fucking stoner version of this shit we were all into it and fucking learning about it and seeing what it's about right you got to be high to get into this shit you got to be super high to get into this shit. Um, and, you know, you come out the other side and you either come out the other side pipelined into deeper conspiracy theories, which end up in like black people had it good under slavery and Jews control everything. Right. Like, I no, literally one of my buddies, like he's nobody talks to him anymore, but he 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 followed the pipeline all the way it's to its conclusion. And, yeah, that's where those are two statements he's literally said to to one of my friends. Right. That like black people had it good under slavery and Jews control everything like the, he followed it to its end conclusion for the pipeline. Right. Most of the, the rest of us were like, yeah, it's fucking goofy as shit. But it was a fun time to sit around and talk about it while high. Right. It, that's take it for the entertainment value that it was. Um, and then, like I said, there's some actual geometry and math and interesting concepts through about the natural world that can be uh, applied and learned. And there's a whole bunch of fucking like historical stuff that you get to learn about, right? H Egyptian architecture and, you know, the foundations of math mathematical concepts as far as we develop them in society and these sorts of things, right? It's a tour of worlds and cultures and stuff that you may not get exposed to otherwise. Um, so there's there's value there to be had if you understand how to glean value from these sorts of things. But at the end of the day, if you do continue following that pipeline, what you end up in is some really fucking either dark or just straight up culty shit. Um, and so like as evidenced by my buddy, dark, and as evidenced by Cuckoo Nut, culty. Right? Like that's 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 where you sort of end up with this shit it's weird one good thing about growing up in this cult is i'm way better at recognizing cult tactics and how they dry, try to draw you in yes Estrella. um uh, let's see uh let's see. Boom, boom fucking yeah rev mm. 
Oh, did uh, critical uh, fundamental Islamic upbringing here? I didn't know that about you, critical. Interesting. Fundamentalist Islamic upbringing. Um, just because it's established religion doesn't uh, doesn't mean we aren't uh, cuckoo cachoo. <laughs> um, in my experience, it gets pretty goddamn dark with the victim blaming. Do the Buddhists do that too? The Buddhists do that too. That's my biggest critique of Buddhists is if you follow Buddhism to its logical conclusion and you become like sort of fundamentalist about it, mm -hmm. that that person is getting, they're suffering the exact way that they should be suffering because of, you know, some some level of karmic retribution. This is, this is what they have earned. This is what the universe is. This is the cycle, right? This is what they are. They need to learn a lesson. And if they don't resolve this karmic debt, if they don't resolve this energy, and then they were doomed to repeat this suffering. And for you to step in and attempt to mitigate that suffering means that the cycle will not potentially be broken. And so, like, you can end up in some pretty dark places. A bunch of Mao's generals were Buddhist, right? Like, this is, you can end up in some pretty fuckered places by following that to its, like, inevitable conclusion. Uh, Christ, the victim blaming in Buddhism is so aggravating, says absurd Buddhist. Yes. Um, yeah. Dark side of Buddhism. Yep. And that's, dude, this is why I'm, I mean, the darkest shit that the Taoists really got up to was like drinking mercury and shit, trying to find the elixir, <laughs> drinking the elixir of immortality, right? Like they were just trying to figure out like how can we live forever? Is there a life expand a life extending like elixir we can concoct? And some of the darkest shit the Taoists got up to was just like if you visit visited a Taoist immortal up in the uh, mountaintops, right? He might have you drink mercury. Right? This is this is the darkest shit they got up to. Um, no genocide campaigns done in the name of Taoism. No fucking like you deserve to suffer campaigns done in the name of Taoism, you know? Yeah. Uh, it, 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 so I, I, the, I'm on team Taoist all the way, right? If we're going to, if we're going to pick a woo woo, right? Like if we're going to pick a weird shit, right? Like human beings like their stories, right? Fucking let's, let's get a, let's get a story going. That's fine. If we're going to pick a story, I'm, I'm with the, I'm on team Taoist 10 times out of 10. Um, they're the only ones that make sense to me. Right. It's just, you know, the, the whoop, the weft, the warp, the way, the, 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 this is the stream. This is the river. It's ever changing. There's no way to know it. You cannot be separated from it. And if you try, you will fail. Stop trying to, uh, try, uh, stop trying to swim upstream and just learn to float with the river. Right. Life is ever changing. The universe is ever changing. And if you try and stall that change, if you try and maintain the status quo, you will do nothing but suffer for it. So just go with it. This is, this is the, the, you know, the wisdom of the Taoists, right? And dude, anarchists claim Taoists as proto-anarchists. Like Peter Marshall, I've read it before. Like I've pulled it out. Like demanding the impossible. There is a chapter on Taoism that Peter Marshall literally recognizes at a historical level that the Taoists are sort of proto-anarchists of a sort. Um. Taoists be like, smoke a joint and chill. Yeah, like, fucking just, just you know. Yeah, it's... Um, I said it's a, it's a chill zone. Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, like, I'm, I'm, that's, that's my team. I'm on team Taoist. If I'm, if I've got to pick a team with any of this bullshit, right? It's, it's, I'm on team Taoist. Here, let me try and find it. Um, let's see, it's going to be somewhere here. It's going to be before the Middle Ages for sure. Um, it's going to be before Christianity. It's going to be before the Greeks. There we go. <clears throat> Anarchism is usually considered a recent Western phenomenon, but its roots reach deep in the ancient civilizations of the East. The first clear expression of an anarchist sensibility may be traced back to the Taoists in ancient China from about the 6th century BC. Indeed, the principal Taoist work, the Tao Te Ching, may be considered one of the greatest anarchist classics. The Taoists at the same time were living in a feudal society in which law was becoming codified and government increasingly centralized and bureaucratic. Confucius was the chief spokesman of the legalistic school supporting these developments and called for a social hierarchy in which every citizen knew his place. 
The Taoists, for their part, rejected government and believed that all could live in natural and spontaneous harmony. The conflict between those who wish to interfere and those who believe that things flourish best when left alone has continued ever since. And I mean, it goes, it goes on like there's more analysis there. Um, but yeah, like even Peter Marshall, like in demanding the impossible, a history of anarchism recognizes the Taoist as a f sort of form of proto anarchism. Um, so yeah. Uh, um, Public, um, read the read the Tao Te Ching, um, public. It's it's a good read. There's a bunch of translations. Read it. I prefer it way more than Buddhism. Um, but to each their own, right? To each their own. Um, spon natural and spontaneous harmony. It's an interesting quote. I like that one. Yeah, it's dude. It. it um, here, let me let me get y'all. Um, there's a decent translation. Uh, there's a decent version of the Tao Te Ching um, that is an illustrated version. It's not like hugely illustrated, but let me, I will upload it to. All right. Um, if you are in the, uh, if you're in the discord server, this link will work for you. If you're not in our discord server, then this link will not work for you. Um, public or it may, I don't fucking know either way. Public feel free to use that PDF link. And that's sort of a, it's an illustrated, it's not totally illustrated, but that's a version of the Tao Te Ching. That's a decent translation. Uh, yeah, it's, the activist Tao Te Ching is never far from me, Mr. Um, but yeah, give it a read. It's not, it's not incredibly raw, raw, uh, long. It's not incredibly difficult to understand. It's not like it is, it's a treatise on how to live your life, how to, how politicians should act. It's a treatise on how to perceive the natural world. It's, you know. It's it's a good time to read. Um, here I'll I'll look. I will do from here, Estrella. But I'm also going to do from the Tao Te Ching here. Um, the Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. The nameless is the beginning of heaven and earth. The named is the mother of ten thousand things. Right. So if you can iterate it out, we're not talking about that. That's not the Tao. We're talking about the truly ineffable, creation itself, the beyond the beyond, right? That's that's the sort of thing. Ever, desire, ever desireless, one can see the mystery. Ever desiring, one sees the manifestations, right? If you're focused on the, the, the stuff, the material world, then all you see is the material. But if you actually contemplate the beyond, the ineffable, you start to see the mystery. You don't see the actual thing, but you see the questions. You start to wonder about it, right? Like this is, this is the start of the Tao Te Ching. This is the opening, right? These two spring from the same source, but differ in name. This appears as darkness, darkness within darkness, the gate to all mystery. No, it's not long. Public. It's a it's a quick read. It's an easy read. That's a that's a solid translation that I that I put up. Um. Yeah. So like yeah, give it a read. Um, Estrella, you wanted something from a random page of the activist Dao De Ching. So here's what I'm gonna do, Estrella. You give me a number one through eighty one. Um, and I will I will read that passage. It's that simple. You pick the number, Estrella. I'll I'll read the 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 passage associated with it. Um. Fifty two. Cool. Interesting. I I, I immediately turned to page fifty three. Um, Zealot. Thank you for the sub, Zealot. Um. Shut the gates. So those of you who don't know what the activist Tao Te Ching is, it's by a guy by the name Bill Martin, William Martin, who's a Taoist, right? He's a self-described Taoist, um, but he's a leftist activist. Um, and so this is his sort of interpretation of various passages of the, uh, of the uh, Tao Te Ching reinterpreted through poetry that he has written that sort of in, in body the original passage, but interpreted through the position and view of somebody who is an activist. 
somebody who's trying to actually change the world, right? So it's a very interesting dichotomy, having somebody who wants to improve the world, but also is embodying a philosophy that says, like, if you try and swim upstream, you will burn your energy out. You will not do the change that you want to do. So to cross the river, you swim with the stream, right? And you allow the pro uh, the propelling of the stream to carry you. So you may not end up where you want to end up. So you have to plot that, right? Start higher in the stream and swim with it and across at the same time. And you end up where you may want to end up. So it's a different sort of geometry. Shut the gates. <clears throat> We cannot transform the world without knowing our own true name. We must see beyond the noise and confusion and become aware of the silent womb in which all things are formed. This is our home, our source, and our refuge. If we can still see the yammering voices that tell us we are small and powerless, we will find an authority within our hearts, a capacity within our bodies, a light behind our eyes that will guide us and our world safely home. Lao Tzu uses the phrase shut the gates in several chapters. It's a symbolic way of urging us to turn our attention inward instead of constantly engaging in the outer world with our thoughts, opinions, and pronouncements. If we're always conducting a shouting match with our opponents, no one will be able to hear our own authentic voice. In the quiet, we find our origin in our home. We cease being isolated orphans and find ourselves a part of all of it. So a little bit of poetry and then his explanation. There you go. That's passage 52. Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, I'm a terrible Taoist. I'm bad at it, but, um, that's my camp. If I have to pick one sidewalk, it's pretty much assumed at this point that Lao Tzu was a historical figure. There's a couple of semi-credible arguments to be made that he was he was potentially a real guy but most of the uh most of the general academic consensus at this point is likely historical figure i uh, likely i'm sorry uh, not likely historical figure but likely um fictional uh fictional character um he's an anthropomorphization of the idealized version of a taoist sorry yeah Um, I did <sighs> Buddhist it, it wasn't for me for some reason but I mean translate see here's the thing Buddhist right translations are difficult and the Hua Hu Cheng uh, Cheng is um I don't know if I've ever found a good translation. Buddhist, do you have a good translation of it? Send me it. Send me it, Buddhist. Drop it to me on Discord or something. Because, dude, translations, getting a good translation of a text like the Tao Te Ching or the Hua Ching, um, difficult. Difficult. Because people's biases, cultural biases, underlying semantical weirdness, all sorts of things can, can carry through translations. Ugh, good translations are so fucking hard to get. Yes, they are. And so but generally it's recommended if you're going to read the Da De Ching in English, you read multiple versions of it because there's nuance that escapes the various translators over the years. Um, I found the one I, I, I put up on Discord decent. It's, 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 it's a pretty good translation. The Tao is the Tao that cannot be translated. Exactly nonsense. Um, oh, it's not. I mean, it's not. It's, dude, cupcake. There's like cultural, like normative values. It's like saying like, it's like using slang, right? Imagine trying to like, imagine 500 years from now and trying to translate a text that uses cringe and sus. <laughs> Right? Like you're, you're, dude, there's explanations that go along with this that you don't have connotation for. You have no idea about Among Us and gamer culture, right? You have no idea about fucking Zoomers, 
right? You have no idea about the, the, the cultural normative values that were being thrust upon a younger generation by a boomer generation who had all of these like problematic elements in them, given the context of a greater invite. Like you don't know any of this shit, right? And you're, you're just reading these words. And so, yeah, there's so many problems, not just like the direct, it's an ancient language and we need to translate it. There's the cultural issues of trying to figure out how best to convey this in the recipient language. Good translations are extraordinarily difficult to do. Yeah, what the fuck is a pog? That game from the 90s? Exactly. Right? Like, it just, it wouldn't work. So, yeah, if, uh, translations are really fucking difficult. A skilled translator is an impressive thing. Um, well, did you know that the translator for Terry Pratchett in French has won several awards for his work? Good for him. That's yeah. it. Yeah, that's... that's. I respect it. Like, we should recognize translators as a more valuable entity until we just have a single global uh, global uh, language, which we do need, by the way. It's going to be English. Yeah, I, 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 look, I'm not learning. Look, I've already learned as much Spanish as I'm probably going to learn. Um, it, it, it's English, folks. It's English. Um, fucking let's just accept it. Let's just accept that the, the the one thing British the British did right is basically rape, fuck, pillage, and murder their language into enough of the globe that most of us know how to communicate with each other. <laughs> it's fucked up. It's fucked up. But we need a global language. We need it, dude. It, the, the planet's too small. It's too, with, with the information age, it's too small. You cannot have as many languages as we have. Look, I get cultural value, blah, blah, blah. I understand the arguments. But the truth of the matter is, is language is a tool. It's a functional item. Yes, it's a cultural artifact that has uh, value within a society that ties into various elements and arts and things throughout history and contemporary um, times. But at the end of the day, the point of language was to be able to identify, likely, 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 identify the poison berry that will d destroy your lever and kill you in 48 hours from the yummy berry that will prevent scurvy right like this is at the end of the day this is this is what this shit's about so like let's get over ourselves a little bit here and just accept we need a global language there was a lot of raping um Jesus Christ, judge, judge, judge. The assumption that all English was spread through raping is probably not true. There was a lot of raping, but let's not assume that, was, that it was all bad. Bruh. 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 <laughs> let's rephrase that statement. <laughs> Look, chat has already pointed out, Cupcake already pointed out, it's hyperbole, right? Um, it's okay with her. It's okay. Um, <laughs> fuck it, bro. Let's find not all activities that the British got up to were negative in their nature, and that sometimes the English language was not spread by raping and murdering, right? That's the way to phrase that rather than, hey, not all raping was bad. <laughs> not all English. <laughs> that was fucking that was a rough phrasing bro I, I i i i get i get where you were i think i get where you were trying to head with that but uh my family's language isn't even spoken in norway anymore unfortunately english is taking over norway's traditional norwegian language it look just get over it i i what are we gonna fucking do man do we do we really want the globe speaking a thousand different languages? Archive this shit. Get fucking native speakers to record it audibly. Get a fucking Rosetta Stone going. Don't let them die. Don't let it slip into the, the infinite void. Let's hang on to this stuff as the cultural artifacts they are and put it in a museum. But at the end of the day, we're not using stone spears anymore, are we? Right? Like, there, there does come a time where... 
we just sort of have to accept that we move on as a species. And language is a technology. Well, counter argument that um, different languages provide different ways of thinking. And it's, I think, valuable to keep that diversity. Can those different ways of thinking be taught external uh, as an externality of those languages? I don't think so. Well, that, I, I would argue that they, we're going to need to see some hard, solid examples of that where you cannot convey those ideas outside of that language, right? Like I understand like Russians see an extra shade of purple due to the way their language is constructed, right? But that's a perceptive issue, not an underlying biological issue. I, 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 and I understand like some of the like, you know um, – like Tom Scott has done videos on these sorts of things, structures and ways of uh, linguistic operators that English does not have and like bring insight into the world, but they can, can be conveyed in English. It's just, we don't have a native mechanism for them, but given that English is the theft language to start with, I think it could integrate them. Like the, the only one, the only one that I'm aware of that is weird and freaks me the fuck out, right? There's, there's one thing related to like language, like cultural linguistic normatives that there's apparently one of the Pacific Islander crew, something to do with their language. They don't have a, a, a subjective left or right. They have compass directions. They've got east, west, north, and south. And they're not subjective. They're objective. And so when they're in a building, even without windows, you can turn them around a bunch of times. And they still know which way is east and west and north and south. Because that's how they reference left and right. It's because like if you turn them right, they're turning from north to east. They're not going from forward to right. And so the way their language actually operates affects how they geospatially perceive a space. That's tricky. That's, that's one of the only examples that I have that I'd be like, okay, that's a linguistic feature Judge, you know, I, I, I figured what you were going for. The wording was not, the interpretation was a little rough, uh, but I get, I get where you're coming from, Judge. Um, yeah, like that's, that's one of the only feature, like linguistic features that I'd be like, I don't think we can steal that, right? Like that's, that's the sort of thing that like is intrinsic in growing up with a linguistic set that is literally affecting the underlying structure of the brain and how you perceive the world and how you operate in it. But, like, I'm pretty sure most of the other examples are, like, we can steal them if we really want them. I don't think it's so much, you know, anti-features as it is. Micro-variations, just, you know, palettes of colors, basically, in your mind. <sighs> it's... But wouldn't... Wouldn't... Wouldn't the descriptive um, capability of English be able to accommodate that? Like, if, no. the, if there isn't, like, that, that color, only, can't we make it? No, no, it's not only the descriptive quality. It's the way the language flows. It's the... Mm. How, how, how can I say it? Like, for just one dumb thing. Like, you call the cops pigs, we call them cows or chickens. Oh, well. Like, it's... Okay, it's a dumb thing, but the the links that are made in our imaginations and the way we process information, it's like very minute variation. It's maybe not a lot, but I think to some extent preserving that diversity of thought of processing the world is worthy in and of itself to be preserved. I think we're it's on the way out whether you like it or not. I think see this is this is the the argument. And yeah, I, I know about the time stuff. Like the Indian subcontinent is a notorious example of that, and English flipped the script on that one. 
um, that like in traditional Hindi, there is no like uh, t- yesterday and tomorrow um, that you, yeah. that, that, I'm sorry, that there isn't like a, a, a specific time. It's, it's now past and future basically. Right. And it's like, oh, well, the British would show up and say, you have to meet me here on next Tuesday. Right. And the fucking the Indian dude would show up like two weeks from then and be like, I'm here. Right. Like they didn't can perceive time in that same like linguistic structural manner. And, yeah, I'm aware of some of that. But the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, I think we're it's I think it's over. Right. Like y- y'all can make this argument. But with the advent of the information age and the internet and the advancement of American media across the globe, I think you're going to end up with Mandarin and English. And I think we're going to end up with some Firefly shit here. I think, I think this is headed towards Firefly basically. Um, However, I still think like there will be regional dialects. There will be. Yeah. Yeah. Just like Europe. Just like fucking Europe. Everybody speaks English. It's just you all speak other languages, two, three, four languages. And but we need a global language like we need it. And it looks like it's going to be English. I have at no point in this conversation said that should happen. Yeah. Yeah. I I just, you know, yeah, I, I, I do. Let's just get this shit done. Teach everybody fucking English and let's move on with our lives. I'm not advocating we go find some lost Amazonian tribe and teach them English either. Leave them the fuck alone. Um, hello, Brazil. Um, fucking knock that shit the fuck off. Stop sending Christian missionaries to random places that have managed to escape our contact at this point. Fuck me. Um, but, you know, yeah. Um, I mean, Estrella, it's just a numbers game. It's just a numbers game. Um, yeah, but I mean, yeah, that's, that's, I see like some firefly shit happening. Um, skeptic, the French speakers all speak English and this, the span, like, you know, English and Mandarin, what about Spanish or French? It's like, well, everybody who speaks French speaks English. Sorry. <laughs> no. I mean, there's, there's, there's exemptions, but y'all teach that shit in school, don't you? Oh, yeah. yeah, there you go. There's exemptions, but the rule pretty much is if you're speaking French, chances are you spe- you 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 understand a smattering of English, um, enough to point the dumb American tourists to the place, right? Um, so Emmanuel Macron yeah. speaks shitty English. Hey, but he speaks English, doesn't he? I I bet I bet if I walked up a fucking Emmanuel Macron, he and I could have a conversation. It's not going to be probably a multi-syllabic deep conversation about political science or philosophy, but we could have a conversation, right? Like that's that at the end of the day, the the, the French speakers all speak English uh, for the purposes of hyperbole and painting with a broad brush, um, and Spanish. Well, as far as Spain is concerned, they mostly speak English too, because they're a European nation. They multi uh, they they multi language that shit right out of the gate. Europeans, God bless you. I wish we did more of that here in the U.S. Um, but as far as Latin America goes, I got to tell you, they speak a lot of English. <laughs> they speak a lot of English. It's it's a far lot less than than you would catch in Spain. But you'd be surprised how far English will get you. In Latin America. And then there's just Brazil who fucking speaks Portuguese for fuck's sake. Portugal. Why are you fucking up the program? Goddamn traitors. You don't know any Bolivians or Chileans who speak uh, speak English? Uh, I've had multiple Chileans on this fucking channel that speak English. Um, like, And most of the Argentinians speak it. The Uruguayans all speak it because that's essentially a European outpost in South America still to this day. They're white as fuck in Uruguay. Um, Peruvians fetishize speaking English. Um, Guatemalans are always concerned with moving up north through Latin America into like America. So you get a whole lot of English speakers from there. It's their route to potentially getting the fuck out usually. Um, Colombians... They speak a decent amount. Um, I was hanging with a Colombian dude a few years ago. 
um, who was here in America, just traveling through, like buying shit at Walmarts and just tr- camping his way through. And he's like, yeah, come down to Columbia, stay at my property. Like, you know, you'd be fine. Um, so it's, they speak a lot of English, man. They speak more English than we speak Spanish. Um, Yeah, it's English is done. Like it's done. It's spread. Like that's that's the kind of point is that's what I'm making is like, look, you know, hang on to them. Like they're great cultural artifacts and they they bring all sorts of dude. I I don't want German to ever die because the Germans are constantly like surprising us with weird fucking words and shit. You're like, oh, yeah, we have a word for that. You're like, you have a fucking word. Wait, it's German. Of course you have a word for that. Um, I appreciate that shit. And then we steal the word. Right. Like I'm, I'm, you know, fucking schadenfreude is the classic example. Uh, but gemutlichkeit, which is one of my favorites as well. Like it's the sensation of good times, good food and good friends. Right. That that feeling of elation you get having a beer in your hand and chilling with your bros at a good cafe or at a pub. Right. That's they've got a word for that. Of course they do. They're fucking Germans. Um, I appreciate that stuff. But Come on, man. We need to be able to like just drop into any location on the globe and communicate. And like it's it's not a matter of like whether you literally physically do that. It's a matter of it's the information age. I can take a picture of my junk and mail it to a uh, email it to a random hotmail address and some dude in India in 128 milliseconds is going to see a picture of my dick. Right? Like that's 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 a fucking small planet to live on. That's a small planet to live on. You cannot have that many languages separating. That's that's artificial barriers you don't need. We talk about borders. Dude, that's an apartheid. That's an apartheid of ideas. That's an apartheid of math. That's an apartheid of economics. That's an apartheid of science. Not being able to communicate those, those ideas in a shared common language is a global apartheid. Hey, Hellfire. Apparently, English has taken a lot of uh, Norwegian words like cozy. Hey. Um, cupcake. Well, that's a new way of thinking about it. It is. There's people. There are people in like, it doesn't matter where. There are people in bumfuck Arkansas and there are people in, you know, uh, fucking Rajasthan, right? Like there's, there's people in all corners of this globe that could be able to collaborate and cooperate and share ideas and visions and project plan and move us forward as a species. And the thing that is holding them back the most is language because you know what? The internet is fairly ubiquitous at this point. Look, we're not there yet, but there will come a day when the internet is ubiquitous, right? It will be everywhere. We're working on that shit. Fucking Elon's working on that shit even, right? Like we are trying to roll out a global internet system. That will happen. So then it's all language. And I'm sorry, like AI translators still are not there. Deep, uh, deep L is good. Like if y'all aren't familiar with deep language, it's a good system. Does pretty solid translations. Um, Google translates a fucking joke. <laughs> um, everybody knows that. Translate it into a, out of a language and into back into the language with Google Translate. See what happens. It's, it's fucking rough. Um, so um, I'm a jelly donut, like Jesus Christ. Um, yep, English is a borrow on our language. It's a ship it takes you from all over uh, all over. English is three languages in a trench coat pretending to be one language. <laughs> and it's a kleptomaniac. Like that's 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 that. Um, how does it make sense to call for a single language as an anarchist? It makes perfect sense. Like, how do I square that? By explaining what I just explained. Anarchism requires cooperation. It requires coordination, right? If I have to go through a translator, if, if for two, and I could not have this conversation directly, be it in French or in English, right? Whichever language that we shared, Right. It doesn't matter. Like if, if I had to bring on a third person to talk to Fertus, 
This is a hindrance to Fertus and I engaging and building a power dynamic. This is a, f a hindrance to he and I building a potentially a mutual aid system or engaging directly with one another, right? Anarchism requires that sort of, again, Foucault, fucking A. It, it's, it's, it's a power dynamic relationship. Like you're building a two-way street. And to do that okay. requires mm. shared verbiage. It requires shared concepts. It requires the ability to construct those shared constructs, uh, shared concepts where they may not exist. And the way you do that is language. And so without that shared language, anarchist shit falls apart pretty quickly, but so does everything else. This isn't unique to anarchism. It's just unique to everything else. Have you ever worked on a team where people spoke five different languages and nobody had a shared common language? You resort to uh, mime, mime shit real fast. That's you're, you're making hand motions and shit at that point. Nuances such as like engineering and physics and scientific concepts and programming these sorts of things, they get pretty lost down the list at that point. You're just trying to figure out, like, you're pointing at shit. Like, that, hand it to me, that sort of thing, right? It's And it's easy. Yeah, Chew Toy, that's a good point. It's easier to other people you can't understand as well. That, pff, like, I don't know. He's just on about some shit. Right? Is everyone in French schools and Belgian schools required to learn English? Skeptic asked. No. Uh, well, kind of, yeah, your, so your first language is usually either English or German, and then if you took German, you're supposed in, um, like, later years to start and learn English, so basically you kind of have to learn English at some point in your high school life. Fair enough. So it was like Spanish or French for us in high school. Yeah. Um, I don't get how that an anarchist, you want to create global power structures. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. Like if, if it, look, it's not happening in my lifetime. Like a macro scale anarchist structure on a glo uh, on, on a globalistic viewpoint uh, from a globalistic viewpoint is not happening in my lifetime, but it's inevitable. Right? Like we are a single species on a single biological spaceship hurtling through the cosmos. It's just common sense. Right? And by the way, communes have to be able to uh, cooperate with one another. Organizations, cooperatives, right? Worker owned cooperatives, hierarchically organized systems. You have to interact. And maybe I don't, I can't get the stuff I need from the cooperative down the street. Maybe. There's an Indian-based cooperative that has what I need. So why should I not do that? Why should I not work with them? Just because it's across the ocean? Why would you want to create global structures? Why is globalist bad? Why do you inherently associate a negative connotation towards, uh, to, uh, towards people operating on a global scale? This is, this is some self-bias that I would point you to analyzing within yourself, Cybot. Why do you associate a negative connotation with global power dynamics? Cupcake just goes in with, in before the Jews. Mm -hmm. It sounds like fascism to me. You don't know what, define fascism, Cybot. Yeah, Estrella, you don't know what that word means. Define fascism. Quick, quick, no Google, quick, quick, quick. What's fascism? Quick, type, 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 hit enter. Quick, what's fascism? <laughs> Umberto echoes rolling in his grave, says Rev. <laughs> So, <laughs> fascism is when governments do things together. Um, I, I, 
Why does a people working together on the... So, uh, one, no, nobody agrees with that definition, but two, uh, fine. Um, fucking, his definition was immutable hierarchy, no individual freedom. How does, how does two cooperatives... How does a, a heterarchical cooperative based in Boulder, Colorado, Colorado using, using modern communication techniques, information age, internet, right? Open source technologies, which are collaboratively built anyway, coordinating with, say, a labor, a cooperative labor force that is owned and operated by workers in, on the subcontinent of India. Why does that remind you of fascism? What about that is an immutable hierarchy with no individual freedom. Or is it just the word globalism is scary to you? Does it remind you of some group of people? Globalism, right? The globalist cabal. Well, it's easy. The planet is not a globe, so of course it's globalism is bad. This meme brought to you by the Flat Earth Crew. It's an uh, oblate spheroid, technically. Yeah, Caboose, I was going to fucking wrap it, but... No, I did not say hierarchy. You said hierarchy. I said power dynamics and power relationships from a Foucaultian perspective. You imprinted your own inherent bias on that conversation, and you just exhibited why it was an unconscious, how it was an unconscious bias, because I literally didn't say that. But you heard it that way. That's fucking hilarious, man. That's amazing. I've got a VOD, man. Like, this is, you, you hurt. Wow. That's impressive. That's impressive. Um, another thing that's annoying about English, um, Uh, is uh, how it borrows whole, whole worlds. Fucking hey, like um. Oh, hang on. Uh, whole words, uh, wholesale. I have a word from another language. Head to t to make a shift sound rather than changing the spelling, so it made sense. People just go around shaming people who didn't know what a specific word to t meant to the shift sound. That is um distron. Um, yeah, that is a thing. Um, I'm sure at some point I discussed hierarchies, but not in that example. I literally was talking about, you asked me about anarchism. You asked me about why anarchism on a global scale. I literally addressed it. And you fucking come back with it reminds me of fascism. Why? I literally used an example of a cooperative on North America and a cooperative on the subcontinent coordinating with each other. Why is that? Fascism. Where's the violence? Where's the, the cult of the leader? Where, like, the rejection of modernity, embracing of uh, tradition? <sighs> where, where, that's, where's all that? that's an impressive thing. Hellfire, I'd love to know. I'd love to know how a, how a cooperative in Boulder, Colorado, per my example, how is a cooperative in Boulder, Colorado, worker-owned and operated, coordinating with a, uh, in, uh, an Indian worker-owned cooperative, how is that a bad thing? Why is this globalism? Mussolini said a lot of shit. And... It was co-op, uh, it was co uh, corporations for Mussolini. Except they're not large. Do you understand how the, uh, you know, Excel, okay. Cybot, do you understand how a distributed network topology operate? No, of course you don't. I'm asking questions that you'd fucking, why am, why, why am I asking that question? Do you understand how a network, a distributed network topology operates? No, of course you don't. 
Of course you don't. Do you understand the difference between centralized, distributed, and uh, and uh, uh, do you understand the difference between cent centralized, decentralized, and distributed? Because I don't think you do. Yeah. Okay. So that that's that's right there. We're we're at cybernetic theory one hundred and one territory. There you go. <clears throat> this is the first thing you need to conceptualize and that you, you have not conceptualized. Um, going in shared content, Zippy. Okay, here's fascism. Here's, 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 here's your rigid hierarchy, right? Here's your vanguardism. This is, this is closer to political and uh, economic classism, right? Here's anarchism. This is a distributed network. All right? Do you understand how this functionally operates? Do you, do you see the, 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 the difference here? Right here is your dictatorship. Everything flows through and out of one node. Thank you, Judge. This is your classic dictatorship. This is also Google or YouTube. Right. This is a centralized network. Everything relies on a center hub. Everything goes through the person or the server farm. This is centralized network, okay? Decentralized network. This, this moves it across a, a different spread, right? This is more parliamentarian or a vanguardistic system, right? There's multiple ministers of something, right? Here's your minister of agriculture. Here's your minister of, of uh, you know, uh, economics. Here's your minister of education. Here's your northeast server farm. Here's your southwest server farm, right? This is a decentralized network, while it's not all flowing through one central hub, it is reliant upon these outer rings and they coordinate amongst themselves. So vanguardist party, parliament, political social class, or, or distributed server farm networks. But still, if the, south, if the northeast server farm goes off, everybody out here loses connection with the northeast, uh, with, the, with the network, Right. That's how it works. This hub goes down. The distributed network is how anarchism works. This is consensus decision making. This is I2P. I2P is a network te uh, technology. Feel free to look into it. It's, it's essentially the darkest of dark nets, right? This is a distributed network topology. This is peer to peer. This is your bit torrents. This is anarchism. Right? This is a grassroots interconnected network. This is consensus decision making at work. If I take this node out of this network, there are multiple pathways. This node does not lose its connection to this node. Even though there's a direct line, what it can then do is go up here, over here, over here, and down here. Right? You can take entire chunks out of this network and I can eliminate this entire right hand side except for this right one. And this guy can still go up, around, down, and down to it, right? There's still a fucking route if I take out this entire, like, chunk right here. This is how a distributed network operates. This is anarchism. You notice it's not all flowing through one person? It's not flowing through a series of elevated people? This is the difference. And so to say that this network scaled up right if I take this network and just 
create a bigger version of it, right? This is this is this is this is your cooperative, right? There's uh, let's just say thirty five nodes in this network, right? This is this is a small business in a town, right? This is this is a productive business. We are critical. Um, this is a productive business in you know in your town, right? But let's just say that oh shit. We want to we wanna join up with another one of these and another one of these and another one of these. Well, there's not going to be a single point of contact between them, will there? Will there be? There's going to be John in shipping who talks to, I don't know, a fucking traditional Indian name. I don't have, what is the Indian name that is the equivalent of John? Somebody give me the stereotype Indian name, right? Um... I know Rev exactly. I you know in your town, mm. uh, Rashid, fine. Rashid works for me. John over in shipping, Sanjay. Okay, we're gonna. I need a few of them, right? Except judge in an anarchistic system, right? In an anarchistic system, if these if these white nodes begin collaborating with each other. Without the input of the blue dots, then you know what happens? The blue dots can withdraw from the white nodes, and they can withhold from them just as effectively as the uh, white can withhold from them. And you know what? They're more numerous than the white dots. These are not critical hub nodes. In fact, they're the minority. And in a consensus decision-making system, any single one of those nodes has a veto vote. This is what you don't understand about consensus decision making, the system that is most favored by anarchists. Any single person has a veto. Now, right now, there's a whole bunch of you motherfuckers that can't even imagine a system operating that way, let alone ever doing a single thing. How do you move off of the word go with everybody being able to veto? Well, you know what? There's numerous methodologies of operation. And you can go to my website and read up on how consensus decision making works. You can watch a YouTube video on it. You can read a guide on how you instruct people on consensus decision making. This is not new. It dates back to indigenous cultures. It's a highly productive methodology of organizing a group and working a project, and it ensures that no one person gets left behind. And you can do this because of this distributed network topology, because essentially the greater whole is made up of a series of interconnected subnetworks. Because it doesn't work from the top down, it works from the bottom up. And that allows for a granular, nuanced discussion to occur between individuals who build those power dynamics, who build those interconnections, who have those associative, associative relationships with one another. There you go. Fuck, you know? Occasionally you got to do it. Occasionally you got to do it. Um, so is he still here or is some, I, I could have sworn somebody saw our guest gotta go sorry ha <laughs> love it love it our guest from Scott left in the middle of that of course he did of course he did he got fucking pwned like that's I'm sorry like I'm not the fucking debate bro type but like that was dude I fucking like started literally schooling him like not fucking YouTube clickbait schooling but literally all right then we need to teach you things because you don't yeah. know stuff right like literally schooling him and so yeah in the middle of the lesson he fucking left that that's fucking hilarious I love it um so <laughs> Well, the rest of y'all learned something, I'm sure. Um, fuck. <laughs> is he really one of Scott's people? Is that is that speculation, or do we know that? Um, Warframe, thanks for the f thanks for the. Um. Whoa, that's some noise. 
Um, Sorry, they're, they're collecting glass. It's okay. Um, yes, we know that. I've seen it. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay, cool. All right, then we know that. Um, did you break every plate you have for two? <laughs> Um, Hellfire, thank you, thank you for the two gift subs. Who got them? Who got them? Uh, Monsieur and oh, Coda, uh, Coda got one. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, Hellfire, thank you kindly. Um, the white dots can't always know the blue dots, so isn't there an opportunity for the relationships to weaken? Yeah, but they don't need to be the strongest, right? Like that's that's the thing is it there there we go radio even like the they're more resilient the whole point is um thank you hellfire um the whole point is and this is the thing I, i've pointed two different groups this is the hilarity of it the defense department of the united states and the, the british architectural association have studied these topics it's a weird fucking pairing right but the fact of the matter is is that like hierarchically organized um systems uh, op have a greater resiliency. Worker cooperatives also have this. Um, this has been well studied within wor the worker cooperative scene from an ec uh, economist point of view. They are more resilient. Um, that is, nothing is perfect. If you're looking for perfection, fuck off. Right? The, the, we are human beings. Everything is fallible. Everything can be destroyed. There is no perfect system. There never will be because human beings are not fucking perfect. But, if you're looking for some of the best options we have, hierarchically organized distributed network topologies are the most resilient through anything. Whether we're talking information technology networks or whether we're talking about a business organizational structure surviving an economic downturn. They are the most resilient uh, structure we have. They're essentially the fucking pyramid of organizational modalities. Right. Like that's that's basically the end uh, end of the day is if you're talking about organizational structure and methods of operating, this is this is the this is like the triangle of of that world. It's super strong. <clears throat> um, either way. Yeah, we're gonna raid out. It's been a long run. Mm. Fertus has been hanging out for a while of it. Fucking thanks for hanging out, Fertus. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah. It was a pleasure. Thanks for thanks for giving us a tour of your like hometown and your fucking college town and shit. That was fucking fun as hell. I hope. <laughs> dude, yeah, that was that was dude, no, that was for Americans. Dude, that blew some, our fucking minds. Uh, dude, the CVS, the, the the pharmacy thing alone, dude, threw it through us all for a trip. Like you, you fucked all of our American brains with that pharmacy shit. We're like, what? You can do that? Yeah. Um. So yeah, for two, thanks for hanging out. Everybody else, thanks for hanging out with me. Um. And yeah, fucking, this is Wednesday, right? So tomorrow's the late show. Tomorrow's the eleven thirty p.m. show. Um. So yeah, uh, it's just we're gonna raid over to uh, USA Hole. Um, I think uh, they. I think I think I think USA is non-binary. Um, so I think it's a they them situation. But either way, I think they're doing politics. Um, so I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for hanging out. Take care, everyone.